I had never noticed until this moment in time, our rewatch. He goes, ah, uh, yeah, we got it. We're gonna play a song. Uh, it's a favorite of the horn section. <laughs> yeah. and, they, and they don't actually play horns during. The they song. all put their stuff down. <laughs> Stand by your <laughs> man. I love that they don't play the damn song. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, it is the distinct pleasure of the management to present to you the morning's star attraction. Here they are. Back after their exclusive four-day tour of Burt Kreischer's house, the Goonies' house, and many various airport bars, won't you welcome from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, the podcast of Mike, Sean, and AJ, The Confused Breakfast. Woo! silence <laughs> well hello there and welcome to a brand new episode of the confused breakfast podcast do you remember the pure joy of a trip to the video rental store as a kid uh-huh. the excitement of walking down the aisles browsing the names and the artwork and finally picking out a movie sure it's hard to beat the ease of the modern era and streaming platforms where you don't even have to leave your couch but there was something truly special about making that trick trick <laughs> Picking a movie out by hand and breaking out in spontaneous song with the random people at Blockbuster. On this podcast, we revisit and dissect some of our favorite childhood movies from that magical era to see if they still move us the way they did as kids. I'm your host, Mike Schulte, and joining me as always, the rhythm section and backbone of a national touring act called The Good Old Boys. Sean Pryor and AJ Vins, how the heck are you? Just laying that, laying that backbone down. So, Mike. You're back. You've been traveling all over the place. You've been drinking lots of beers in airports, having a good time. Are you feeling good? What's next, man? You got the money you owe us, <laughs> motherfucker? <laughs> I just felt like if there was any episode we were going to not play our intro song, it was this one. Come on. Yeah, that makes a, sense. And the best part is you guys didn't know we were going to do that. And uh-uh. if you watch our YouTube video, we went nuts. Oh, yeah. This studio is a mess now. I know. Oh. It's disgusting. We'll get there. You can't hear that song <laughs> and sorry. not dance. I'm, it's, sorry. I'm sorry, LAS. You can't, get, you can't get. You can't <laughs> not get pumped and feel like you're like walking out on stage. Right. That's what I'm saying. Well, boys, on this episode, we discuss a movie that set a world record for the most cars wrecked during filming. The 10th most popular movie of 1980, a movie that made it seem like musicals were actually watchable, cool, and worth your time. What? Seem like. A movie about a band powerful enough to turn goat piss into gasoline. We're, of course, talking about 1980s The Blues Brothers. It's Wednesday morning. It's early. Way too early for you. You're probably sitting in traffic, like me. Why not have your coffee and bacon with the confused breakfast boys? Good morning, boys. Good morning. Damn, dang it. Well, if you are new to this podcast, we will be reviewing this movie with a modern eye. But in order to do that properly, you got to talk about it with pure nostalgia so that we can build that nostalgia up and then pull it back. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start with AJ. AJ, tell us the first time you saw this movie and what your nostalgic rating is. (laughs) This is a movie that I cannot think of the first time that I saw it. I think I've just always had this playing in the back of my brain. And re- on repeat, little glimpses just pop into my my vision, and I just I just sit there and think, oh yeah, no, I've, all, I've I think I was born with this movie inside yeah. of my brain, uh, as Sean has said about some other ones. I don't know, man. Like uh, I I think all I can ever remember or think of when I've seen this movie is it's got to be on TV, and it's always clips of commercials and just them driving in there, and the famous quote of Chicago cigarettes, half yep. a tank of gas. And that's it, you know. And we're wearing sunglasses, and you're just like, you know what? Um, but it's 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 so great. I, I I enjoyed it the first time I saw it. Some of it I didn't understand. Some of it I actually thought, even as a kid, was completely outlandish because I thought it was supposed to be like a serious story. 
So some of it I really didn't understand, although I did like parts and aspects of it. So I'm going to give this just a nice little 6.1. Mm, 6.1 for the age. Sean, what about you, man? Yeah, I think my dad showed me this movie back in the day. And just like AJ, I don't, rem- I don't even know if I've seen all of it, but I know like when I'm watching it that I have. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like It's just like... Like you said, like it's in my bones. Um, I liked the, (laughs) yeah, here we go. I liked the, the, the performance aspects a lot. Like uh, the musical numbers, obviously when you're a kid, you're like, oh, that's fun. They're dancing and singing and stuff and uh, doing all that. And then like the jokes I never really got, obviously, Mm -hmm. but um, I enjoyed watching it. I probably have to say I'm a, I'm a 5.8. 5.8, I have always loved this movie. The The craziness of this movie is the first time I ever saw this is like a life-changing moment for me. Not in the way that you would like, oh, what? No, it's just a weird moment in time where I was sitting crisscross applesauce on my floor. Um, I'm, I'm in fifth grade. I'm watching this with my dad and his brother, my uncle, behind us. The chase scene happens. The car, police car, busts through the music window, store window. Yes. And hits that drum set. Yes. And <laughs> I'm just I'm just making a comment. I just go, oh, man, that sucks for that drum set. I bet that was pretty expensive. My uncle goes, you like drums? You want a drum set? Do you want a drum set? Do you want to be a drummer? What's up with that? Do you want to come get the drums that I have in my house and I'll just give it to you? <laughs> and I just kind of went, uh, yeah, sure, I'll take a drum set. It's a good uncle. Turns out my uncle's just trying to clear his storage garage yeah. out and give it. So we went over that day, finished the movie, went over, and I had a drum set and brought it home to my house, which, in my opinion, has forever changed my life. The fact that I was given a drum set and then learned how to play music. So right. the first time I ever saw this movie is maximum importance for me. Uh, so I'm a straight up nine for this movie uh, when I first saw it. Executive producer Bud Larson, he chose this movie as part of his perk Good being job. executive producer. He said, I remember watching this on TBS with my dad. Yes. When watching on cable, it seemed to cut out parts of the movie. We owned this on VHS and DVD. If you don't know by now, I am a movie quote guy. So many legendary quotes from this movie from we're on a mission from God to this car has a lot of pickup to who wants an orange whip, orange whip, <laughs> orange whip, three <laughs> orange whips. This is a movie that whenever it was on, my dad and I would always watch it. He's given it a 10 nostalgic rating. Damn. That is a 7.73 nostalgically. So if we're going to go back and we're going to look at all the movies we've done, that's high up there. Nostalgic low. rating. That is uh, that's actually top 20. That's going to be right below Wedding Singer, right above Home Alone. Wow. That's pretty sacred uh. ground, nostalgically, I would say, for, oh, where, yeah. for where we're at. That means, like, totally. this is a great movie. We watched this multiple times. Below Wedding Singer? Just below Wedding Singer. It's another great music movie. Yeah. Weird. You know? So, like, we, it's like we were predestined to, like, movies that were about music, kind of, like, with good soundtracks. It's weird that hmm. we're, like, musicians before <sighs> we were podcasters. Weird. Wow. Well, you got to fail somewhere, guys. Got to. <laughs> you got to <laughs> fail in something to determine <laughs> out what you're really good at, talking in a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so next it's time to learn all the pertinent, important details of the movie. Sean, hook us up. What do you got, man? Here we go. Produced by Robert K. Weiss, written by Dan Aykroyd and John Landis. Cinematography by Stephen Katz. Also did Kentucky Fried Movie, uh, Baby Geniuses. And uh, a little movie back in 73, I think. Uh, it's a really cool horror movie called Messiah of Evil. Check it out when uh, Halloween rolls back around. Oh. Fucking never. No. Uh, <laughs> edited no. by George Falsey Jr. Um, choreography by Carlton Johnson. Stunt coordination by Gary McLarty. Music contributions by Ira Newborn and Elmer Bernstein. Directed by John Landis. Cast. John Belushi. Dan Aykroyd, John Candy, Carrie Fisher, Cab Calloway, Ray Charles, Aretha Franklin, James Brown, Kathleen Freeman, Stephen Williams, Henry Gibson, Matt Murray, Charles Napier, Twiggy, John Lee Hooker, and Paul Rubens. Yeah. The Blues Brothers were a creation of Aykroyd and Belushi on SNL with the help of composer Howard Shore, actually. That was weird. The backstory for the (laughs) characters is that the brothers grew up in an orphanage and their fates were sealed after they met Blues Man and Janitor Curtis, and when they both cut their fingers on a guitar string of Elmore James. At the time, Belushi was a major star. With, his, with the success of Animal House, Belushi at one point had the number one movie, number one TV show, and number one album in America. Aykroyd had never written or even read a script before, so when he got to writing, he had fleshed out a lot of the characters and backstories. 
Aykroyd's script ended up being 324 pages, and it was up to Landis to scale down that to scale that down into an actual shooting size, which he did in two weeks. Mm. The average length of a script is probably like 120 pages, 100, did, 130. Didn't so he, he like say it. they want he wanted it to be like a two movie, like two movies? He wanted it to be two separate movies. Is that yeah, what you well, said? there was enough ideas for it for sure. But yeah, I mean that like, doesn't work back then. No, like, you got to just make the movie. Yeah. You can't be like, come around for the next part. You're like, yeah, you get the movie you make has to be a success before you're like, <laughs> that, we should probably do that again. Or maybe a famous book that everyone wants to see made into a movie, like yeah. Lord of the yeah. Rings. Yeah, didn't didn't they say like he 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 carried it around in like yellow pages? <laughs> yes, yes, covers. He, he, like said was, he said <laughs> it was. He said it was so thick because like it was like a joke. He's like he sent it around, you know, and it wasn't like he didn't like obviously he doesn't know the format of script writing, so he was just like fucking yeah. pouring everything out just writing it down probably no Jesus. punctuation or anything right and then it was so thick he actually like wound it in a, <laughs> in a yellow pages cover i love it uh it was actually at the demand of Ackroyd that the film featured musicians with speaking parts that accompany musical parts the production company was not happy with this considering that most of the players hadn't had any hits in a long time and wanted to replace the bits with more contemporary artists of the time Landis fought for the original artists like Franklin and James Brown. Hell yes, dude. Um, I think it was only Ray Ray Charles who was actually in the charts and like had a career at the time. But all the other ones, they were like, "No, let's let's get like Millie Vanilli in there and shit like that." Millie. That would just that like just pretend that happened. This this still would have been a very popular movie. It would be like, "Oh yeah, Millie Vanilli's there," and "Oh, this is cool." But like, d- it does not work. It does not have the same vibe without the people that are in this movie. It's it you know like the Blues Brothers are imbued with like Elmore James and artists like yeah. this. It doesn't make sense without them. Yeah. And if you if you don't have them, it's better to ha- not have them than to have like La Freak by Chic. You know, <laughs> right said Fred. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Photography began in July 1979 and went on with relative ease for the first month or so. Belushi's excessive nightlife got in the way of production through the whole duration. Belushi would miss production meetings and be caught sleeping when he was supposed to be on set. His drinking and drug use would anger Aykroyd and and, uh, Landis. A rumor is that a portion of the budget was set aside for cocaine and booze. The production actually had their own bar set up on set for cast and crew called (laughs) the Blues Club. Jeez. (laughs) Sounds like a bad idea when the crew's getting to go to a bar (laughs) as well. Yeah. (laughs) It's, I mean, Especially when we got stunt drivers that are about this, to hit a crash scene. Uh, I don't see this on the books. What's this two hundred thousand dollars? Don't worry about it. Allocated for? Oh, that? No, that's. Uh, I wouldn't worry about that little guy. <laughs> don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah, no. Uh, this it's, is good it's, as money, sir. Those are IOUs. Just, <laughs> just, just why? dust off the white that it's covered in. Yeah, I'm gonna ask you this question after this. <laughs> <laughs> why, why not worry about it? What? You know what? You should come on by. We'll show you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool. <laughs> so they didn't want the cast and crew to like have the have an issue of like people or like especially Belushi d- traveling, yeah. like, leaving set to go get booze. <laughs> oh, that's tough. And, and 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 scoring coke. That they were just like, let's just allocate budget for it. Yeah, it's, it's nuts. Ch- it's Chicago, enabling, it's whatever. Yeah. So yeah, he Lu- died two years l- later, right? Two years oh, later, gosh. he was done. Uh, Belushi's use came to a head when Landis found Belushi with a mountain of cocaine in his trailer and would <laughs> calm Belushi down enough to finish production when it returned to L.A. to finish shots. Uh, the film was m- mostly on- shot on location in and around Chicago, which, at- which after the film came out, set Chicago on the map for future productions. The film. Oh, I didn't even think about that. The film went about ten million over budget, which obviously angered Universal. On top of Belushi and Aykroyd leaving SNL, people did not have faith that the film would be a success. Ted Mann, head of Mann Theaters, like Chinese Mann's Chinese Theater in L.A., okay. did not want to book the film in, in his theater specifically. He did not want black people going to white theaters, and did not think moviegoers, white moviegoers, would want to see a movie with black singers in it. The film got half the booking of a normal event movie would get at the time. I read that and was like, what in the fuck? Dude, 1980. <laughs> Come on. Dude. I was born in 82. It just doesn't make any sense. Like, it, the, the, like what did you sign up for? Like, his, he was signed on when Universal was like, hey, look, we're going to ma- be making this movie just so a heads up. You're probably going to want it. You know? Uh, yeah. He's like, well, I don't want black people coming in my theaters. <laughs> okay, dude. What the hell are you talking <laughs> it's about? It's ridiculous. Oh, the blues. Hey, hey, yeah, no, go ahead, man. Okay, the Blues Brothers opened on June twentieth, nineteen eighty, on a budget of twenty-seven point five million. The film would eventually gross one hundred and fifteen point two million. 
uh, gain a sequel that's technically a movie, be one of the most <laughs> successful musicals of all time, and rank in between both Wayne's World films as the best SNL ad- adaptations. I, I talk a lot about, you know, in my <laughs> intro about, like, uh, made a sequel that no one should ever watch. I didn't even want to talk about this It's one. Let's not. Let's just not. <laughs> you mean you guys don't love? Um, I knew Liz? you. Would. <laughs> you guys, come on. John Goodman, man. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have my kid. own segment. <laughs> I'm gonna have my own segment one day about just sequels, <laughs> and that should or should not be watched. Maybe. Maybe you should defend it in court. <laughs> oh, yeah. maybe oh. you should. Weird. <laughs> well, hey, it works inside the timeline, eh? Well. Well, <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> we I know don't. you got at least one friend who loves this movie as much as you do. They, we know you grew up with them. Your dad, your brother, your friend. Hit the share icon. Send this episode directly to him. That's one of the best ways you can support the podcast. Don't forget to go to our website, confusedbreakfast.com, for all kinds of goodies. Check out ratings from all of our movies. And the best way you can support us, you go to patreon.com slash confusedbreakfast. Join over 200 people to get voting on upcoming movies to get like 90 hours of bonus audio at this point join our private discord channel that is all at patreon.com slash confused breakfast up next we have aj he does the research for us he hooks us up with the ratings reviews critics fans alike what do you got man let me tell you what i got we're not talking about the blues we're talking about the reds and the tomato meter gross 73 percent on the tomato meter, certified fresh. That's hmm. a pretty good score. That is, you know, of the movies we've done, yeah, that is just below Goonies, just above Austin Powers. See? I mean, that's like, that is good company, right? It's a great company. Good. It's where they feel that movie should go. Yeah. Uh, audiences feel it should be even better at 92%. Ooh. Yeah, that feels a little um, bit better. That's real high. Yeah. And uh, IMDb uh, lands at a 7.9. That is top 15 of anything we've done. Tied with Christmas Story, slightly less than Groundhog Day, slightly higher than Ghostbusters. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Slightly higher than Ghosty. Ghostbusters. Slightly higher than Ghostbusters. Okay. I like that. That's just fine. Uh, Chicago Tribune, of course, they're going to praise their own. Oh, yeah. Uh, 100 out of 100. Gene Siskel. Siskel's coming in hot. He said short and sweet. An exceptional comedy, car wrecks and blues-related music galore, and the best movie ever made in Chicago. Wow. He wrote that in 1980. And he's At, a writer in Chicago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, yeah. Isn't that fun? Well, John well. Hughes hasn't hit the scene yet, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> uh, he's a suburbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah come on. Yeah. Uh, Shermer doesn't count. No. <laughs> uh, the Washington Post did not think... The same as Chicago. Chicago sucks. Chicago. Uh, The Washington Post said, Belushi, Aykroyd, and director John Landis have betrayed the expectations of comedy fans as wantonly and foolishly as Stanley Dubrick betrayed (laughs) the implied contract between himself and horror fans by transforming The Shining into a self-indulgent schnorrer. Needless to say, the greatest casualty of of this astonishing and surely avoidable miscalculation will be the reputations of the performers themselves. Huh. Yeah. That's a weird comment. It is really weird. He he just decided that um, it's just not, he he just doesn't think that they are worth it at all. Was that just a fan review? No, that was that was Washington Post. That oh, that's was, right. Yeah, that was Washington Post. Oh, someone that gets paid to write reviews? Yeah, somebody oh, that gets okay. paid to write reviews <laughs> cool. said that, that Belushi and Aykroyd and Landis are just, they're just not any good. Okay. How about that? How about that? I don't, I just... Oh, you don't agree? It's, he's probably just like location bias. He's like, why was this movie made in Washington? <laughs> Should have brought it up to D.C. D- or wherever <laughs> the Washington Post is. Maybe it's the state. I don't know. No one even Who knows cares? or cares. You can't even decide Everyone where they're where from. where the Chicago Tribune is. <laughs> Shit. Uh, all right, fan review. 10 out of 10. Truly glorious madness, said Wanobi in 2021. How can anyone not love this movie? Extraordinary central performances from Belushi and Aykroyd, plus outstanding support from every other central character, with fabulous musical accompaniment from some of the greatest talents of all time. Don't analyze the hysterical madness of this movie. Just embrace it for what it is. Pure, unadulterated fun. You right, you right. I feel like that's pretty accurate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so but this person it? disagreed. Okay. 
<laughs> or is it? <laughs> said, <laughs> said Lovener, boring and dumb. 2020. Come on. No, what don't... month? October. Oh, just, my God. just erase all reviews that, from 2020 uh, because October? they're just <laughs> all miserable pieces of shit. That was the first month of our first podcast episode. Yeah. And we were doing things to make life better. What were you doing? Yeah. What were you doing? Sitting to trans- in your basement being a dick? <laughs> Shitting on art? <laughs> Boring and dim. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait till they <laughs> wait till they read this. Boring and d- D U M. I mean D U M B. Get him. Technically, he's, he's exercising his right to free speech. Off to a it, great. And we're fine with that. But we can also make fun of you for your free speech. <laughs> Absolutely. Off to a great start already, as he says to himself. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's gonna love this. Oh yeah. <laughs> for those thumbs ups to come flying in. Yes, seven out of twenty found this review helpful. So hey, come on. Uh, <laughs> his mom, right. his other account, his, his other <laughs> account, his uh, burner account. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, there's nothing smart or funny about this movie. I didn't laugh once. It's a stream of car chasing scenes mixed with two long scenes of nothingness. The actual movie audio is horrible. I saw the version on Netflix in 2020. If people love this, they could have at least remastered the audio. Not to mention the murky picture quality. Appalling. There's there's plenty more than two scenes. I don't know like <laughs> where the two scenes even like even as a joke where that would be. I don't know. Like what are the two scenes? <laughs> I don't know. I, it's I like, don't have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have to explain myself. I, I don't have time to sit and write about more of the movie in my review of the movie. But it's boring and dumb. This movie is unwatchable. After I finished watching it, I decided to say this. <laughs> Fucking dummies. I, I watched it so you don't have to. And I don't like blues. Four brothers. <laughs> I don't like blues. I only have sisters. sisters. <laughs> Two brothers. Growing up, me and my sisters watched this. Didn't really like it. They should have made a movie called The Country Sisters. <laughs> if if, if you want did. a better movie, go watch Sister in the Traveling Pants. <laughs> <laughs> Someday when we hit like 500 episodes, I'm just going to take all of our impressions <laughs> from the review and then just make make a review out of it of the Confused Breakfast. It's just it's just us doing you talk. It's just, <laughs> it's just, it's just a soundboard yeah. for, for a movie review. <laughs> when you're talking about movies about music, I much prefer Coyote Ugly. <laughs> this, <laughs> watching this unwatchable movie. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Are you done, AJ? I'm done. We're always off the rails by the time AJ segment's <laughs> over. Well, before we dissect this movie scene by scene, That's me. we got to give a shout out to Cedar Ridge Whiskey. I heard from a few people that they forgot to buy their Cedar Ridge for their Thanksgiving table. Now, that is my fault. I did release our last episode where I said that the day before Thanksgiving. Nobody wants to go to the liquor store or the grocery store on that day. So here is your official Christmas warning. Christmas is even more warm cozy nostalgic than thanksgiving in my opinion whiskey is a great pairing for the month of december aj is changing glasses i hate every segment i I hate hate those so much obviously (laughs) the only choice for whiskey that you want for the month of december is cedar ridge cedar ridge whiskey is in our backyard here in swisher iowa they truly make the best whiskey in the entire world you may be able to stop out to your local store or distributor and pick some up. If not, you can go online to cedarridgewhiskey.com to order some straight to your door. I'm a recommender of the quintessential American single malt. Yeah. It's kind of been my go-to lately. That's, like I said, it's perfect to drink neat or maybe just like one big cube there. If you love Scott, this is this should be their new slogan. Listen up, Cedar Ridge. If you love Scotch, try this. If you don't love Scotch, Try this. Yeah. yeah. Got him. <laughs> Got him. I'm not good at slogans like you guys are. Was, I <laughs> loved it. Please That's drink good. responsibly. And thanks again for sending us your stories, letting us know that you're consuming Cedar Ridge. That means the world. They take a chance on us. They help support this podcast in order for us to send the word out to you guys. And then we just don't really know what happens after that because it's hard to track that stuff. But That's right. when you guys tell us you got it and you told a bunch of friends, that means the world. So send it to us. We'll talk about it on air. CedarRidgeWhiskey.com.
Cedarridgewhiskey.com. Cedarridgewhiskey.com. Cedarridgewhiskey.com. Well, my dudes, it's 76 minutes until the end of this podcast. <laughs> we got full glasses of Cedar Ridge whiskey, half cans of beer, the mics are hot, and we're wearing Felix Grace. We're the number one movie podcast in the world, and nobody's going to catch us because we're on a mission from Gad. Yeah, dog. Here we go. So Jake Blues is released from prison and is picked up by his brother Elwood. Hearing Jake's disapproval of his new car, Elwood demonstrates its capabilities by jumping an open drawbridge. The brothers visit the Catholic orphanage where they were raised and learn from Sister Mary Stigmata that it will be closed unless $5,000 in property taxes is collected. After a chat with Curtis, they go to see Reverend Cleophus James at the Triple Rock Baptist Church. Jake has an epiphany. They can reform their band, the Blues Brothers, and raise the money to save the orphanage. Do you guys at all remember this industrial intro? No, not at all. Do you, did they just cut this from all TV? Because this is, this is a pretty long movie, surprisingly. It's very long. What? First of all, I've never once seen this intro where they're like showing like factories and industry. Yeah. Second of all, what was the point of that? I think I don't it's, get it. I think it's just kind of setting up um like I think it's where the prison is, like Joliet. I think it's um like the surroundings is like that factory kind of land. But only us would know that because we've driven to Chicago from Iowa. It's true. It's what's, true. Like what's the plot what's the plot line of that? Are we t- are you know, I guess it's just confusing to me. It's it's like, oh, this is uh it's like it's a blue collar town. Yeah. Yeah. But it's are. not. It's but Chicago. Again, it's not. But again. <laughs> with Joliet, well, I don't know. Well, I don't actually live here. My brother's been in the jail, so yeah. we better show the town. We better show the town. This is Joliet. This is where Joliet Jake got his name. <laughs> I, but no, he didn't. He got it from the prison. Like, that's it. I like it. it to me, it like, kind of uh, evokes like a blues kind of feeling like like you know like a working man blue collar kind of thing yeah um that's what it kind of evokes but yeah I, at first i'm like what does this have to do with anything it's strange i mean it's, it's it doesn't falling. even look great if they had not if <laughs> no. they had not sw- yeah dude if they had not switched over to then now the the long prison thing like this is a very let me ask you did you notice how long it take it took until there was music in this movie this movie a while. is arguably a musical and it's a, a movie yes. about music Six and a half minutes before there was any actual music. And this, had it not been so awesome to watch J- Jake Blues uh, in the prison and all those interactions and the prophylactics, yeah. <laughs> used prophylactics, used prophylactics, this would be the worst intro of all time. I, I like the, the artistry of it, and I'd li- I like yeah. that they're not showing his face right yes. away. I like that there's shots from, I think, like a below them walking. Oh, God. It's awesome. I just I love that. And then once he finally does get to like the door, it is a beautiful shot. How did they do that? Is that real? I, it looks it looks. You're a talking little, about the sunset, yeah. like when the doors open. It looks a little artificial. They could have just had like a, you know, like a white blanket and just shine some light on it. Dude, but it's if it's not... Awesome. Oh my! Like that is, I want that as like my Facebook <laughs> background or whatever the yeah. banner screensaver. Yeah, just the doors opening and closing. Yeah, it's it's really really gorgeous. I I think that there's also something to be said. Like you say, there's not music for this long, and yeah, it's there's no music in prison until he gets out. You know, cool. that's kind of my that was my thing. No too. music in factories either. Nope, there's no, no music in factories. Just noise. No music just, in, uh, at any place of work actually. J- yes. That's what I've heard. But we'll talk about this throughout. The perfect use of music in this movie. Yeah. She caught the Katie. Blum, blam, and it's right on their face. Blum, blam, other person's face. Blum, blam, both of them looking at each other. It it shouldn't work. And it's, it works so good. It's so like obviously directed, but it's so like it's so that's what I want to see <laughs> in a movie, like especially from like John Landis, who's like a, a bit of an auteur, and like Tarantino, or just like he knows to cut on music, and he knows that he's gonna get that close up of them, you know. <laughs> he and already knew what song was gonna play. Exactly, yeah. it's it's so just well set up and uh, gets you right, right. You're the third brother at that point. Yeah, you know, you're 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 long for it, and like you say, he he knows what music he was gonna do or how the shots the shots are going to line up, and there's even points where. Um, there's a lot of the movement is to music as well, like on purpose, like mm-hmm. sometimes almost painfully obvious, yeah. but, um, but it still works. And this movie going through it, you'll, you know, that 
you, you have to kind of set yourself up that it is an outlandish movie. Yes. It is. We an, don't even know if some of this, like, you, you could know, argue that some of this isn't even happening. Yeah, like, right. If you wanted to go that route, we're yeah. not going to, but you're absolutely right. Yeah. It's cartoonish. Yes. It's like a comic book almost. And I kind of wish. I wish there was a Blues Brothers comic book or something, man. Oh, my like, God. You know what I mean? Like, just continuous stories of them just doing things and, like, meeting back up with the band randomly and just anything well, We have like to that. believe, like, especially that Dan Aykroyd wrote 324 pages. There's, like, at least, like, 230 more. What got cut <laughs> out, you know? Dude. Yeah. Like he said what he, misadventures. Exactly. He said he had a bunch of adventures for the Blues Brothers to do, and this was just kind of one of them. Wow. And they just kind of focused on this one. I I love when their banter in the car too. Where he's like, "Trade the Cadillac for a microphone." <laughs> no, no, oh, that goes, makes sense. He goes, "The caddy, <laughs> you traded the caddy for this? What are you thinking?" He goes, "No, I traded it for a microphone." Oh, all right, a <laughs> microphone. That's the only thing he's good all with. Right, I can see that. <laughs> That's yeah. the musician in a red. Okay. Yeah. All musicians are laughing at the rest of people. Like, I don't know. So you <laughs> gave up your four good tires for a, a snare drum. Like, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, that's a pretty right. good snare drum. No, wow. Yeah, we need that tonight. Yeah, that's actually. good. Well. I could see that. Yeah, you don't like it. You know, the the jump. <laughs> no, yeah. I don't like it. No, I don't. <laughs> I mean, come on. How many times did you ever pull up to a drawbridge at some point in your life and think? Every time I, I see, I can ramp that. Every time I see one of those like uh, uh, car carriers or whatever that are just like on the <laughs> ground, I'm like, yes. I could just, I could just run and yeah. jump that thing and like you do that in Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, <laughs> that's, all, that's yeah. all I think about when I see shit like that. You have to like it's you're and you're so glad and you're it's you know you see it you see the little like the the threads and it's like oh yeah it's opening like way up and then it jumps <laughs> in and it's like way closer together <laughs> but you don't care no. don't he's care. just he's just doing what everybody wants to do and you jump the bridge in the car yeah. right and he's just he's like it's got a cop motor it's got a four fifty brakes cop, cop tires brake, cop, cop tires. mufflers <laughs> yeah, he's just like <laughs> is it the new blues mobile or what and fix a cigarette lighter <laughs> got a lot of pickup <laughs> yeah <laughs> that he threw out earlier <laughs> you're already it. like you're not getting much dialogue between them but you're already feeling the brotherly connection between these two you know like right. they don't have they they didn't talk for who knows how long and now they're right back into like oh, okay yeah. Yeah. we're in the same seats we always were and we're about to go do the same things we're supposed to do yeah. Do you? Uh, I'm not asking how old do you, or do you think, or if you know how old the actors are. But do you? Who do you think is the older brother and who's the younger brother? It seems to me that Jake is older, okay. and Elwood is a little younger. Yeah, for some reason, Jake is older. Yeah, yeah. I kind of feel that way. What do you think? I fe- I felt the opposite, but it's because I knew what their you know, real yeah. ages were. Yeah. Because uh, Aykroyd, or no, uh, Ac- actually, no, Belushi's a little older than Aykroyd. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so then that's the way I would have felt. Okay. For some reason, Aykroyd does seem older, though. He seems wiser and... Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. He's, he seems like the, you know, he's he's the... J- uh, Jake grounded is... Grounded, almost? Yeah. Or? Uh, Elwood's more of the grounded one, and Jake's more of, like, the ideas man. Yeah. And Elwood just kind of goes along with it, like a younger brother would Yeah, to that's me. true. And he's the driver. You know, like he's a real good driver. He's the yeah. driver. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and that's the thing. You got to think Aykroyd, uh, Belushi was 31 in, during this movie, and Aykroyd was only 28 years old. Damn. That's crazy. Which is so wild to think about. Uh, and and I I thought about him as the younger one, too, but I I just, I also thought of them as twins at one point. Yeah. I don't know why. Sure. Like Probably because you saw the movie Twins, and you're like, "Yeah, you don't. Oh have, yeah, you don't have to look alike at all." Oh yeah, there's just Devito, and then there's not Devito. You just you just <laughs> share some chromosomes. And yeah, like what kind of chromosomes are that? I don't know. <laughs> we I think that was in a Patreon episode where where we were going off the rails about my childhood and doozles and stuff like that. Yes. I think we probably need to mark those so we can find that someday. But um, <laughs> the name of the church that he goes to, the orphanage, uh, you know. Proper Catholic, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. St. Saint Helen of the Blessed Shroud. And that just makes me laugh because many people might think that that's just funny. Mm-hmm. They're like, yeah, they're just trying to come up with like a funny old school name. No, pretty much like those old school big city Catholic places like where I grew up. My The school I went to and the church I went to was North American Martyrs. And our Jesus. neighboring our neighboring parish was Our Lady of Fatima. And oh. the joke I think that we about went off the rails was that our sports teams had to combine and we were Fatima Martyrs. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You're the fat- and then we just disagreed and said, no, you're making all this up. Yeah. No. The- yeah. 
Nope. So I I still laughed when I saw that because I'm like that. There's, nailed, that nailed the time. They're sticking to the this like industrial <laughs> town kind of vibe. That's of, what it was, man. Yes, of just very, very, very. Not, I don't want to say religious, but almost God fearing folk. Well, yeah. and that's how that's you know? how they were like full on penguin penguin outfits. Yeah, yeah. and penguins people with some, rulers. She's and shit. got some fencing skills, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I love how she breaks one and like immediately has another. She gets another like one. a better one. <laughs> goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. She gets a metal one instead. It's just I love that. Oh, it's it's. She, they just go back and forth. It's just like wow, it's, fuck, oh, shit, shit. Oh. ah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus that, that son of a bitch, <laughs> Pat Panger. And then uh, my favorite line is, oh, fuck this noise. <laughs> <laughs> the, I love the scoot up. It's like, oh, yeah. come closer, boys. <laughs> he, he looks like he's genuinely hurting. Belushi does. I know. Stuck in that chair. <laughs> I love also, um, well, first of all, this is I know it's an orphanage, but this is how I feel like Jake. Every time I like walk into a church, I'm just like skeptical and on edge. And then like there is... You see, like the giant suffering Christ on on the cross, looking down at you at the stairs, and you're just like, "What am I?" I know that like there's a term, the fear of God, but this is a bit bit obsessive. Yeah, and it's it's just it's it's gross. It's the fear of God. There's the guilt of God. Yeah, that's what that. Is. Maybe I'm just guilty. You're Maybe just, you just feel the guilt just riding through. It's that like that original yeah, sin is still deep inside it's, you, man. It's it so is. deep, and I love it. <laughs> and yes, and so do you. Yeah, <laughs> this is the fuel for the show. Um, that was scary as a kid, though. Her, all of her parts, like her floating. That's oh yeah, you redeemed yourself, and she I floats just, back on a skateboard. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just like, oh, kick flip. <laughs> On a skateboard. I love that. I love to think that there's just like she's on one of those hoverboards or something. <laughs> <laughs> she's just really good at it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the second. This like I think next week our movie will have another one of those moments. Kindergarten cop where oh, it's yeah. just like a guy floats by. Yeah. That is effective <laughs> as fuck though. It is. Like it's when creepy. they when they're not moving their body but they're moving. That's played as a joke. It, it it really gets me. Yes. I love that. Yes. And but somehow b- making it serious makes it somehow more sinister. Yeah. <laughs> like well that's not natural. So now I'm scared more. And love what it. I was saying about churches, I think the only thing that could redeem my faith in in any sort of religion is and I'm not being anything I'm not being any like cynical or anything like that. I swear to God, if I was to attend a black church like this with James Brown singing, I would be fucking saved. This looks like such a good time. Yes. Yeah. And I know like I've seen I guess movies, but I've seen like videos and stuff where they're just they are just singing and singing soul music and dancing and like that is the kind of church I want to go to. Obviously, the people on trampolines jumping 50 feet in the air is not something that happens what? there. But, Wait, but, so they don't have those no, trampolines in the No, they don't have trampolines, no. Oh. But, but you're absolutely right. Like This is this style of church. I've, you're not the first person that has ever said that. Like oh, Everyone oh, yeah. has watched this and been like, why can't my church be that way or something like that? Yeah. You know? Cause, and it's funny because Cab C- Calloway, his name's Curtis in the movie, apparently lives in the basement of the orphanage <laughs> yeah works for the church i'm guessing but he's like yo don't fuck with this catholic church go over to the baptist church you're gonna like that <laughs> a lot better that's yeah. basically what he tells him yeah, yeah you're right he's, he's yeah he's like yeah this is kind of rough over here but um go have fun over there you're not gonna get any sort of epiphany in this church yeah. <laughs> no just gonna get hit with rulers get but beatings. you go see cleophis uh whatever his name is james brown yeah. cleophis james yes. reverend he will set you straight yeah yeah, I like I like the fact that uh, they they don't technically they don't have any real strong interaction with him. It's not about like they don't have like a conversation. Right. With him, right. He just he's just there doing what he does. Do you see the light. Yeah. Rather than. And I feel like that could have been an easy pitfall for maybe some not so great non actor dialogue. To, yeah, to pop to, on through. To have James Brown come in and remember his lines. Yeah. And stuff like <laughs> well, I mean, he was a big part of like Belushi, too. I think he ran off set one they time. They kept him apart. Yeah, but they probably did. I think he ran off set one time, and they had to like go get him and to, to finish his scene. I like, heard he took the Bluesmobile and then couldn't find his way back. <laughs> That's what I heard. I love that. Yeah, he, yeah he, he, like, he got off the line or something. He drove it like... An hour, two hours, like on an I eighty towards Iowa. In, yeah, <laughs> into Iowa. Basically, got to Davenport. Had, didn't have the right map, and get so he did, a new map. Yeah, get yourself a new map. <laughs> and he got picked up, but they didn't have a registration in the car. Twenty-seven miles, miles away. Away. There, we'll talk about it a lot, but a lot of these performances, um, 
you know, you've got these famous, famous people doing this stuff, but many of them, they wanted them all to like lip sync. They mm. wanted it all to be pre recorded. And many of them were like, I don't, I've never done that before. And also, I'm not going to do that. True kind of musicians thing. where there's like, I can't, I literally can't do it the, the same way a second time. And, and you'll, we'll talk about it later, but you'll notice how it, it's not always the best option. You may think this is the best option, but on this scene, uh, James Brown, it was a pre recorded music track and choir, but James Brown's vocals were on the they spot. Like he was doing it live. Yeah. Mm, really? And do you recognize uh, the choir, uh, the main kind of girl in the choir with the longer curly hair Mm-mm. dancing? She was like the soloist. Who's that? Shaka Khan. Sh- Shaka Khan. Uh, there is a lot of smaller cameos beneath the bigger cameos. Shaka Khan was, was one of the, right. the, the choir members in that okay. thing. Okay. And that, dude, I don't know if that guy. We're going to talk about a lot of great musicians in this movie, but I don't know if the guy playing the bass player in the church was actually the bass player. Did you hear that bass line? Yeah. It's oh, ripping. Just ripping and roaring. And, and he, was just stand, he was just standing there waiting. He goes, come on, when are we going to start this song? I'm ready. Yeah. Fingers fingers ready. And they just... I mean, like, unbelievable. I would go I would go to church every day if that was church. Just ripping scales, man. Oh, how was the homilies? I don't know, but the bass player just killed it again. Yeah. Did you get on the trampoline? No, my back's been hurt. You're actually watching the bass player? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> well, friends, listen up. Before we move on to scene two, we got to give a shout out to our amazing sponsor, Felix Gray Glasses. This incredible company makes blue light filtering glasses that filter out all the harmful blue light. There's been so many studies that talks about blue light. That wavelength form is the worst that hits your eyeballs and it causes some serious effects from just not sleeping well, not hitting that that REM dream state to like. Even more serious things that, you know, we're not scientists. We're not going to tell you about it. You can go online. You can read all of it. But Felix Gray came along to invent these glasses that have filters in them already that will block out all that blue light because we're never going to go f- to a place where we're not looking at screens or phones or iPads or TVs. Um, the cool thing is, is like about this time of year, I'm always thinking about Christmas gifts, right? I'm like, I'll never think anything. I'll just buy a DVD, I guess, for my dad. I don't know. <laughs> But it's like, think about it now. Like, this is a really good, if you want to get somebody a really good gift, like, think about looking at Felix Gray glasses. It's a good thing to, somebody may not think to buy them for themselves, but if you get them a pair, you can get prescription. If you know their prescription, you can also just get, like, readers or just non-prescription. Like, I wear contacts every day, so I will wear non-prescription Felix Grays when I'm at my computer screen Mm -hmm. working. So, like, maybe go check it out. You know, they're doing contacts now. They're doing sunglasses uh, Felix Gray is fantastic. They're stylish, affordable glasses. They look normal. They don't got that stupid little film you got that it looks like it's going to fall off the first time it gets yeah. scraped. So uh, check them out. FelixGrayGlasses.com slash confused. That's F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y glasses.com slash confused. Free shipping, free returns, free exchanges. We love those guys. They support us. Go support them. Felix, Gla- Felix, Felix Gray, right? Glay, no, it's Glay? Felix Glay, yeah. Felix Gray? They just changed it. Hey, man, block the blue. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, good. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Are we done? We're canceled. No. <laughs> well, that was it, guys. They, if we don't sell 100 pairs after this episode, we are canceled. <laughs> All right, so scene two. That night, state troopers attempt to arrest Elwood, resulting in a high-speed chase through the Dixie Square Mall. The brothers escape. The next morning, as the police arrive at the flop house where Elwood lives, a mysterious woman detonates a bomb that demolishes the building but leaves Jake and Elwood unharmed and saves them from being arrested. I never realized Elwood was totally right. About the yellow light, yeah. Did you do you see that? So he he drives through the yellow light. I mean, it's it's hitting red as he's crossing over the next side of the intersection. Yeah, but that's fine. That's fine. But yes. he gets pulled over, and they're like, "You you ran a red light, sir." He's like, "The light was yellow, sir." Hey, these cops are are not up to snuff. They're borderline crooked, in my opinion. There's another instance uh, coming up that I'll I'll make mention of this. But I agree with you, and yeah, you're right. It was, it was yellow. It was. It was yellow. And they're like simple traffic cops. They're not detectives. Why are they on this case the whole time? Well, no, they're not. So they're just pulling this car over. Yeah. But when they when they got scamads, so when they run his <laughs> license, the, the 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 machine tells them this guy's this guy has 
<laughs> it's 116 parking <laughs> violations and 56 moving violations. <laughs> but he also goes, dude, I haven't been pulled over in six I months. Dude, I haven't been pulled over in like six years, <laughs> yeah. dude. Like six months is not good. Not <laughs> but they're they're like at the theater waiting for him too. No, no, no. This is earlier. This is early on. They're, they the boys um they leave. Uh, the church and they're driving home to the flop house and they get pulled over. Uh, I and see. then this is what causes the high speed chase through the mall. So those cops were just sitting behind a thing waiting to pull somebody they're over. They're stinging. Uh, yeah, yeah, they were stinging. Now, but now they're on the case now. See. Yeah, it, it still doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> just move along. They, they, they're they're only there. They're only there. They to take his license, and they they pull him over for a BS reason, and then, but unfortunately, but Jake is. Come on, this is. <laughs> I I think I'm just so mad because it's like, yeah, he shouldn't have probably been driving anyways. He was on a suspended license. This is the very like ad- like adult in me or something, or maybe it's the the high, the very very kid in me of like, well, he shouldn't have probably been doing that anyways. <laughs> yeah. So I don't think he should have been driving. And then, oh no, he peeled away. <laughs> and then ensues the most insane car chase through a mall. Yeah. This this blows my mind. That all of this is real. Yeah, they they found just literally like an abandoned <laughs> thing and made all of this stuff. And like companies like Toys R Us <laughs> oh came in God, and they you... filled the shelves themselves. Like companies like came in and did that, like Foot Locker and all that. And yeah, it broken glass everywhere. And how many cars are in here? Like three or four. Dude, I mean, like yeah, one tips going over through there. Yeah, it's one hundred and three throughout the whole movie. Yeah, I mean, it's wow. just nuts. This is chaos, chaos, chaos. But it's it, like we're talking about. It's like the heightened chaos. It's the it's the heightened reality of all this. Like they are from on a mission from God. So some hijinks are going to be a little unbelievable. And I think that's what's beautiful about this movie. And I don't like if you don't get that. If you're not like giving yourself over to that, then you're. It's not going to be for you. This entire time, you yeah. know, at this point, you're realizing that be like, well, this would never happen. But like, like you said, when they crash into the uh, music equipment, like the drum falls over and everything. I wish there was more of a reaction from them. Yeah. Like, okay, OK. Like I want to be like, no, nah. <laughs> like, oh, no. Oh. But they but that's what's so nuts about this. There's I love how calm they are. Yeah. And so are the cops. Oh, wow. Look at that. Can you believe that they got that over there? You know, like <laughs> everybody's just like hey, yeah. Del Taco. I think everything about this is you're just thinking it's just, it's just oh yeah this is this is totally happened this is normal oh high speed chases yeah this just happens it's just no part normal part of, of life <laughs> yeah. for anybody yeah. right so it's all good it's all good what what so they had the world record of 103 cars wrecked during this film up until mm-hmm. 1982 when the junk man yeah have you ever seen that before no. The junk man broke the record two years later, wrecking 150 cars in a plane. That record was held for two decades until over 300 cars were wrecked during the filming of what movie in 2003? Um, the Blues Brothers 2000. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, Matrix Reloaded. Oh. Remember that scene? Yeah, oh. I mean, not many people do, but yeah. Or whatever? That was 300 cars. It was broken, I think, after that, too, by um, G.I. Joe, The Rise of Cobra. Really? Which oh, is just yeah. like... <laughs> Really? That was their main goal. It was like, we're not going to make it. It actually was their goal. <laughs> like, that's what I read was like, their goal was to like have that just, record. Just break, break crash records. Yeah. That's it. I also read somewhere too that it was um, Blues Brothers 2000 that took over the, the record after Blues Brothers by one car. <laughs> but I guess that's wrong. I was like, I want to believe that though. <laughs> like, they like literally just tried to do it by one. They, th- hopefully, that kid was in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what do you guys think about uh, Carrie Fisher's character? It's just so like like we've been saying. It's so fantastical. It's like holy shit! Like a, a four <laughs> cylinder rocket launcher. Yeah. Good God! And then they just get up and dust their shoulders off. <laughs> do you do you? Oh, go ahead, man. I was just gonna say that's just such a. It, it's I just love how much nobody cares about it. And I, as a kid. As a kid, I took everything so literally. <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe every kid is like are that. T- are, how else are you supposed to take this? You're right. Maybe maybe you think this is funny. Like in, as an adult, do you think that that's funny? Do you I, laugh? I, or, kind of, I laughed. Right. So, but when, as, when Belushi's in her sight, it's so just so absurd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he looks the, over. The, the crosshair is just very funny. <laughs> but but like the fact that a, a like she pulls out a rocket launcher and then blows them up. But then she, as she speeds up, they just get on up, dust off, and walk into the house. And you're, 
as a kid, you're you're just like, oh, okay, so they're not reacting, so this must be like a normal thing. <laughs> this <is> down, <laughs> gotta watch out, Chicago. Oh, okay. Okay. Downtown Chicago. Is this just what Chicago's like, or oh, that's why, that's why, that's why Chicago's like the big cities are scary places because there's rocket launchers <laughs> there's everywhere. There's a white woman with rocket launchers <laughs> yeah. going all over Attractive the place. White woman with rocket yeah. launchers she shooting is, their ex-husbands. She is gorgeous in this yes, movie. My very goodness. much. So. Uh, <laughs> well, you can start making arguments like, is is she even real? Like, is she a figment of their imagination? Is she pulling up but just dreaming like that she's doing that? Because there's never no one ever cares that bum in the hallway didn't even care. <laughs> yeah. The the people upstairs were like, yeah, whatever. But but then you argue it because there's is smoke coming as they come upstairs, smoke is coming into the big room that they're in. Yeah, that's right. But like she drives away, how does she know she doesn't she didn't kill him? That's what I'm saying. Because like, then she comes back for the bomb. Later. As as a kid, you're like, Why why is she doing all this? And yeah. like, why are they why are they just getting up and as an adult, I'm like, go finish them off. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you already got the other bomb, Fucking there, just blow it. Double yeah. tap. Like I hate movies where they just <laughs> drop the gun next to the bad guy, you know? Yep. Go no. finish him off. Long <laughs> explanations or no explanation at all, and you just leave. I get it. <laughs> at okay. this point, I'm just rooting for Carrie. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna put them in an elaborate plan and just assume it all went according. What what what's the big deal? What's the big deal? About <laughs> Something really cozy about his apartment too. Oh, I, would, no. I, I, I literally have the same exact. Do you really, yeah. dude? I don't know. Maybe it's just the fact that it's just got. I can kind of feel summer in this movie for some reason. Like he's got his window open. Um, he's got his window open there, and I don't know why. Like. They're trying to make it seem like a bad thing. Like, look, there's no space, and he's making his white toast on a <laughs> yeah. on a grill. Yeah. But for some reason, I kind of want to put that record on and watch those subway trains go I, by. Yeah, I I feel the same exact way. And when uh, Jake falls asleep, I'm like, yeah, I'd probably pass out with trains just blaring by. Yeah. I, in every shot of of that apartment, of like looking out the window, every shot that you see that has the window in it, there's a train going by. <laughs> yeah. It's I, crazy. I I always thought about uh, people say, "Oh yeah, I got a place in the city," you know. <laughs> and I used to think it's like, "Oh man, I'd love this to be like my place in the city. I could just go I like hang. trains." It's like a <laughs> from Mount Pleasant, the Amtrak goes through there. The Amtrak like goes through. <laughs> <laughs> you got? Do you guys like planes? It's the PL two two. Do you guys ever ridden on an Amtrak? <laughs> do you guys want to go on an Amtrak? Do you guys ever go? I like front seat. Front seat's <laughs> fine. <laughs> I like the Tin Man. <laughs> I like the Tin Man. <laughs> I like Santa. Okay. Okay. Anyway. Uh, don't talk to me. I'm constantly I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, like I got a place in the city. It's like a glorified, glorified closet. It's a treehouse that you like, pay for, like gas. Like I'm sure you pay more in gas than you do the actual rent. Yeah, exactly. you know. Yeah, it costs it, it costs more to heat that piece of toast <laughs> yeah. than it does the cost of that then place. Turn probably. on your little desk lamp. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it never failed though during this scene. He's like, "Boy, you, you got my cheese whiz, boy." That I was always like, "I want cheese whiz." Because <laughs> as a I kid, want toast, that was I want the cheese best. whiz. <laughs> yeah, that. So, so now we have to add that to the list of things that will survive the apocalypse. To uh, cheese whiz Twinkies, uh, what is it? Titanic box sets. Rubik's cubes yes. and uh, and now cheese, cheese whiz, whiz cans because it survived the the fallout of the you missile bet launch. It did. Yeah, yep. so <laughs> stock up, rock stock and roll, up right man. now. I'm telling you. Yeah. Uh, so scene three, Jake and Elwood begin tracking down members of the band. Five of them are performing as Murph and the Magic Tones at a deserted Holiday Inn lounge and quickly agree to rejoin. Another turns them down as, the, as he's the mater d' at an expensive restaurant, but the brothers refuse to leave the restaurant until he relents. On their way to meeting the final two band members, the brothers find the road through Jackson Park blocked by an American Nazi party demonstration on a bridge. Elwood runs them off the bridge into the water. Did you guys notice when they go to that lady's house and get like the lead for their bandmates to find like Murph and the Magic Tones? Yeah, or something? yeah. yeah. Well, her name's like Mrs. Toronto or Tarantino. I think it's Tarantino. It's right. Tarantino. Right. Yeah. It's. Is this a nod? I think so. I mean, I mean, is anybody else you know named Tarantino? Yeah. Uh, when was when was Tarantino like becoming a thing? Not even yet. So <laughs> then, is it? I don't. I. It doesn't make any sense. But it's so weird. Maybe Landis rented a video from him. Maybe. At one point, and it was just like, <laughs> he's like, hey, really, thanks for the great recommendation, Dude, by the way. I'm going to write you into my script. That was great. What's your name again? Uh, 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 Quentin. Quentin. Quentin what? Quentin Tarantino. Damn, that's cool. I love that name. <laughs> I love that name, kid. You should hold on to it. Hold and on to that name. Yeah. yeah. Hold on to that name, kid. I, I always, like it. I don't Cutie. know why I always quote that. I'm always like, Mr. Man. Mr. Mr. <laughs> man. Yeah. Mr. Man. <laughs> I don't Are you know guys why cops? I... No. We're musicians. Oh, man. We're musicians. <laughs> I love it. 
<laughs> what were their habits? What was he, he says, what were they like? What were their habits? Like asking cop <laughs> questions. It's yeah. like, oh, they were nice boys, but they made a lot of ruckus at, or a lot of noise at night. Like they're practicing at night or something or or what? You're damn fucking right. They did these dudes. Like, let's break this down. So we're we're meeting. We're, let's just talk about all the musicians at once here. Um, Steve Colonel Cropper, yeah, on guitar. Donald Duck Dunn on bass. Willie Too Big Hall on drums. Those three dudes were in Booker T and the MGs. They were Stax Records session musicians, oh, which geez. meant people would would an artist would just come in and they'd go, "We're gonna do this song," and they would all learn it. They were they played on hits um, by Sam and Dave, Otis Redding, Bill Withers, Elvis Presley, and others. These dudes Who have are those guys? chops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> then then you get you get out of there. You've got Tom Bones Malone, Alan Rubin, and Lou Marini all on horn. They were Saturday Night Live band members. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Cream of the crop. So like Belushi and Aykroyd would have just been like, "We need a horn section. Those guys are the shit." Then you got uh, Matt Guitar Murphy. He was just a dope ass guitar player that they had gone. Can you imagine John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd walk, coming to your show and being like, "You, we're making a movie and a band, and we want you. We yeah. just want you." It's in essentially it. what happened with Matt Guitar Murphy. Um, the only one that really wasn't like terribly too famous was Murph himself. Murph Dunn. Uh, it was supposed to be Paul Schaefer. Mm, yes, and uh, that yeah, automatically would have just like I don't know how I would have felt about that. Isn't Paul Schaefer the Letterman? Letterman, yeah, yeah. the long term Lo- Letterman guy. Looks like he's made of rubber. Yeah, um, th- yeah, like these like stacks was responsible for like this sound, like Memphis sound, like it's just what it is. And like these guys were a band before this movie. Like they had a number one record out. Like they they were they came up with the sketch for these. Uh, characters and then they just literally just started making music and they got these these guys to make music with them and then eventually went on to make this movie and like we we need you guys for the movie you have to be in it you know they they did they would perform all over the place and they would you know number one fucking album i own two of their albums i listen to them over thanksgiving it is always a go-to if i got people at my house i'm pulling out blues brothers vinyl yeah um and but think about like this always atones back to like athletes wanting to be actors and actors wanting to be musicians and musicians wanting to be athletes. There's this triangle of, of things. So I'm picturing Dan Aykroyd and, and uh, John Belushi basically just being like, dude, we're really famous and so we can get, do whatever we want now. We need the best band in the world because yeah. I want to be a musician. And they basically got to have the cream of the crop. Just go, I want those guys and I want to start a band yeah. and I have money. Just piece it all together. Bad ass. Yeah, it's nuts. Yeah, they. Um, what Dan Aykroyd had had a little anecdote when I was watching like a making of this, and he said, "Yeah, you know, you go to you go to college, and uh, you st- I studied like so- sociology, psychology, all this psych stuff, and uh, and here I am in show business." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, I guess that's how it works out if you just have it, you know. Yeah. Exactly. Quando, 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 quando. I hate this. The, I, I hate dude, this. but I'll tell you what, though. For some reason, I want to go to that bar. Oh, yeah. This year, hotel bars used to be a thing. Oh, yeah. There yeah. was one here in Cedar Rapids. Remember at Cooper's Mill? Yes. It was, the best, it was like a Best Western <laughs> Holiday Inn Lounge. It was just like this. Uh, Good pancakes, too. Dude. <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, uh, that, that really shows what's going on here. It, it proves to the audience, whether you're a musician or not, it shows... These guys are not making much money and they're down on their luck. Yeah. You know, like you don't have to be a musician to realize that this sucks. Right. <laughs> and they're way too good for this. Oh yeah. And they're 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 all in their red suit jackets. It's sad. And it's like <laughs> matching this red lounge and of the holiday in the red Corvette, Re- <laughs> yeah. with the world's largest trunk that they apparently fit all their gear into it. It's like it's like the same idea of like uh, of the everyone wears uniforms at fast food restaurants and at the movie theater. Kind of like we, when when we talked about uh, f- uh, Fast Times. Yep, everyone's got their uniforms, and these guys are no different. It's like it's almost like the corporate, like you say, you're not making a lot of money almost hourly paid musician of just just being there and filling sound well, it's Fill, like in the filling wedding, air it's like in the wedding singer too or they're yeah you know, they're wearing they're they rent out that hall so they rent out the band too you know and then they 
see what colors that the bride and groom are wearing, yep. and they wear the same kind of colors. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like that. These guys were the fastest to say yes, though. I mean, granted, really two big halls, like, you got my money, motherfucker, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> which I, th- I think he might be my favorite actor of all of them. Yeah. I think so, too. He does a great <laughs> job. <laughs> yeah, I think he's maybe the best chops of any yeah, actor. Yeah, yeah. And I love, and we're going to talk about this more, but we've talked about so many movies like Cassandra from Wayne's World where it's like, she's not really playing the bass, but like, no. you you can, you know that in some of these scenes, like, he's not really hitting the drums for sound yeah. reasons, but he's doing what he needs to do. Yeah, and these yeah. guys are real. You look at Donald Duck Dunn and he's oh. cruising on that bass, you know, you look at Murph and he's playing scales and doing lead parts and it, it sounds and looks like it's true. Donald Duck Dunn never stops playing something. <laughs> and it's, he is, <laughs> he that's, doesn't know dead air. That's like not a root note man. That, yeah. that guy just <laughs> walks around that stage uh, through his bass. He looks like his veins are made of bass, <laughs> bass <laughs> strings. <laughs> and he's got that pipe in his mouth too. And I love watching him. Like when he's like on stage, he's just, he's just always just, and it's like <laughs> hips are kind of going and just like in time yeah. with the steps he is just cruising the whole time dude i love it so much Same. the one that doesn't want to change is mr fabulous oh yeah uh they go to the restaurant this scene makes me laugh so it's much maybe the funniest scene i i love it yeah i this was us in LA. Let's just. Put I it mean, up. they <laughs> smell. They smell. <laughs> yeah. Bad. Yeah. They. Nobody probably wanted to sit with us. They probably put us in like some the booth. That is so why that they would, put us in the they, side. Yeah. Booth they put us in the booth, like kind of off to the side of the door, and like, but so there's a lot of airflow, you know, all that stuff, and um, and and hopefully, hopefully, we proved ourselves by the end of it, but I doubt we did. No. <laughs> Not you to LA. Ordered a ham sandwich. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's the ham sandwiches. Phenomenal. Eating shrimp <laughs> cocktails and uh, what, whatever some, the hell you had, some uh, yeah. <laughs> or the shooters that we had that you could not swallow. Some bread for my, some bread for my brother. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love to like it's so perfect. They don't need to do these little gags, but like they ordered the Dom Perignon from Pee Wee Herman. Oh yeah, which is I'm sure oh, there's yeah. a connection there somehow. Yeah, it's weird because yeah. he would. This would have been before Pee Wee, right? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, this Paul, is like, I think this is his first movie. Yeah, he his was first just the appearance guy. in a in a movie. Yeah. But they order the $120 bottle of Dom Perignon, 71. That'll be fine, pal. That'll be fine. And they, <laughs> <laughs> it was two in case we want seconds. But they pour, yeah. He pours the one, and he goes, that's the wrong glass. Okay. Or he's like, <laughs> <laughs> my favorite look. <laughs> it's my favorite thing that I have done so many times of like, or like when somebody, it makes me think of Uncle Frank, you know, <laughs> fill, fill it up, fill it up, please, fill it up, please. Or, or when they set, they come around and they, they say, "Oh yeah, who's who's gonna taste for it?" And like they pour a little bit in, and you're just like, <laughs> "Come on, come on!" Come on. Come on. <laughs> it's the funniest look. And then him throwing the shrimp into into John Belushi's yeah. mouth. At first, at first he like aims, and then yeah. like later on he's like, <laughs> "They got like, it down." Oh, for sure. The first one was a shot like that. They got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And it was kind of a longer scene before that too. So they would have had to do it a couple times, didn't they? <laughs> oh yeah. It's How fucking- much for the little girl? <laughs> The women. the women. How much for your women? Sell me your children. <laughs> Hit it. If we were on a train to yes. go punch a face, yeah. I'm on board. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. There's not terribly too many. F- they want you to punch faces in this movie, but they're all like, you know, I think I got to punch the, the dad in the restaurant. I think I got it. Because, like, that's that's like the worst kind of people. Sir. In my opinion. Sir. 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 Uh, yeah, I'm with you. Like you don't, I we've all sat at a table next to people you don't want to sit at. You just fucking do it. I I hate people who are mean to uh, yes. wait, waiters and waitresses and stuff. I hate that, it's especially the maitre d. Like he is making really good money at this restaurant. Yeah. I guarantee it. But it's still service industry. You still got to treat people good. Yeah, so. I was going to say, um, any of the Nazis, any of the Illinois Nazis. Oh yeah. I was going to say literally any of them. All of them as a collective? Yeah, like if I could just line them all up and just go, you know, that kind of a thing. You're allowed to say that. We don't always have to agree. No, yeah, I. but I do agree with you. That guy, he is trash. I don't like The only thing worse than Nazis. The only thing worse than Nazis. guy that treats his service industry people bad. Is that what you're trying to say? Are you going on record? Waiter Nazis. So. <laughs> Waiter Nazis. I think so. I think we've just... <laughs> 
<laughs> you, know, you know what? There are some people out there I, that are like, what? dude, you got to treat service into people. Guys. You know <laughs> what, Mike? You, you've convinced me. I was going to say this Nazis in general, but you know what? You're right. <laughs> Just the, the whole guy who is The guy that's the having a bad day because <laughs> there's smelly people next to him. That's the guy. <laughs> that You're right. That's the guy who deserves to be punched. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. Well, we got to we got to at least talk about the, the well, f- fucking Nazi. Party. It's like because the, they like dissolve from this scene into a Nazi flag. I'm like, wow, this movie took a turn. Yeah, <laughs> there's was, Nazis. It, in it this. was a very interesting choice to do this because like you didn't you didn't you could have just made you could have just made this extra group. of You didn't even have to have an extra group of people chasing. No, you. but like you did and you did and you chose to make them. Nazis, which I always felt, I'm right. like, I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, not, but like, we're we're clearly seeing how there was already racism, how they didn't want to play videos in the South because it was there was black people in it in 1980. This was still an issue that I think they wanted to personally put them in this movie so that they could make fools of them. It was based off a real thing. Yeah, they they like that's right. The, there was like the Nazi Party of Illinois or something like that that uh, back in the day like wanted to protest and wanted to protest publicly free speech and yeah i mean i guess so but then you know everyone was like against that obviously because it sucks it's free speech and then yes <laughs> and then you know the the state had to approve it yeah yeah because yeah. it's 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 one of the amendments i think <laughs> is what i hear they won their case <laughs> <That's, that's, laughs> you know we don't fuck scumbags run their, run their case yeah. who <laughs> well, fuck it, fucking nazis. nazis party it's like <laughs> illinois, illinois nazis, nazis. He's like, he's like, I hate Illinois Nazis. <laughs> specifically Illinois yeah. Nazis. Specifically Illinois Nazis because of what you're just talking about. Yeah, like, yeah it, that's the reference, yeah, I think. Yeah, it, it, it is. And was that Henry Gibson? Henry Gibson. Uh, yes. Our boy, uh, uh, Dr. Klopek from you The bet. Burbs. Yes. You bet. He, that's, a tough, that's a tough role to play, right? Like, to be like, hey, I want you to be in this movie and be a guy that everybody hates because you're a Nazi. And he's like, yeah. all right. He plays it. There's something about that man yes. that's cute. Yes. <laughs> like, what is it? <laughs> you know, And he's never aged. No, yeah, I think he was born with white hair and <laughs> like huge ears, and yeah, I. You're saying that you can you can very clearly picture like his a yearbook photo of his from <laughs> yes. every yeah, <laughs> yeah like he, I, I he agree. Almost, he, if he ever looked younger, he is the Mad TV mascot. Oh yeah, with the red hair and the huge ears. Yes, that's that's uh, Henry Gibson. They should just do that. Yeah, I do love that they just drive right through. With no intention of stopping. It's the hold, hold your ground. They're not going to stop. Oh, my God. Yeah. They're good. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> Don't worry. We can hold this. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, he introduces his Nazi group as the American Socialist White People's Party. The acronym of that is Asswipe. That's right. <laughs> which I love so much. Yeah. Uh, that gonna checks get, out. Going to get that on a license plate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you guys see? Uh, uh, maybe, may, well, maybe we'll talk about it when we finally pick up. No, I'm going to talk about it now. Uh, when when they do see when we do see them in the um, in his office and stuff. Yes. So too. Did you see uh, the picture behind him? No. Uh, it's uh, it's actually uh, uh, David Hasselhoff. Is it really? No, it's not. But you guys believed it for a second. Yeah. 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 It sure did. <laughs> yeah. It looks like him. I think it's it's some it's some originator of like the American Nazi party or something, but it looks like David Hasselhoff. David Hasselhoff. It looks just like David Hasselhoff. David Hasselhoff. <laughs> yes. Hasselhoff. Yes. <laughs> All right, so scene four, the last two band members who now run a soul food restaurant rejoin the band against the advice of one's wife. The reunited group obtains instruments and equipment from Ray's Music Exchange in Calumet City. The band stumbles onto a gig at Bob's Country Bunker. They win over the rowdy crowd but run up a bar tab higher than their pay and infuriate the good old boys, the country band that was actually booked before the gig. Realizing that they need one big gig show to raise the necessary money, the brothers persuade their old agent to book the Palace Hotel Ballroom north of Chicago. I love John Lee Hooker. Dude, and this is one of the take me the, to where where is he on a street corner? I, I want to go. What yeah. is this? What is, are yeah. they just hanging out on on streets? Is Sunday. This, this is like a flea market. Yeah, I want to go here. I want to be here. Uh, John Lee Hooker playing. It's one of the live performances. Yes. Like you know, he's a blues player. He's not gonna put an in ear in and no. be like I'll play along. To it's that. fucking John Lee Hooker. It is no. awesome. He's uh, gonna say what's lip syncing. Yeah, he's gonna say what's an in ear. Yeah. <laughs> like that's just, <laughs> yeah. what are you talking about? Okay. What's, you guys, are here to, you guys are here to re- record me uh, playing music, right? This is what I do. This is just Don't worry. Do. It'll be just as good as the pre recorded All right, I'll version. just do that then. Yeah. Boom, boom, <laughs> boom, 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 boom. I love how he gets in the argument with the guy. This is, no, I wrote this song. No, I, I wrote this song. And then after they get done in a Wait, what? Yeah. 
John Lee Hooker's like gets in an argument with. I mean, that's the version I saw. Wait a second. What, I don't remember this. Really? No. no. I was kind of seen this movie a million times. I was kind of wondering what? if I saw a different cut. You to be saw honest. a different no, cut. No, they go right to the street and he's playing music. Yeah. Really? That's it. Well, then after he's playing nope. music. Nope. Then they, they are, just then go they right to the, the soul food m- Dude, restaurant. What? He, he gets up and like gets gets in an argument with like a buddy and the, it's like a playful argument. And then after they get done with the Rethas, you can see them uh, leaving. You can see them in the background still fighting. And I was like, that's what? hilarious. Wow. What are you talking about? There was about? another scene, too. I forget. I, I might have it in my notes on later, but I thought like that was a scene that I had never seen before. Where did you find this interesting? This, this was... Uh, oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> all right, all right. No longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, fine. If, anyway, that's that's weird, but uh, Aretha's, yeah. Yeah, if, uh, if Mr. Fabulous or... Uh, too Big Hall is the best actor of the group. McIntyre Murphy's the worst. Yep. He might be the oh, worst. Oh man, man, he's not good. <laughs> I I hate to say, man, <laughs> because this is a this is a, a queen. This is Aretha, you know. Yeah. But this is thus one of the scenes where they 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 had to pick the best edits yeah. for this. And this is the only scene in the movie that I do not like. It it, it sucks because this is one of the best parts of the movie. Yeah. One of the best songs, Aretha unbelievable but nothing lines up the claps the dancing the lip syncing the it's nothing somebody just did a really bad job yeah it, it just seems like the movie is done with like it doesn't have there was no more shots that landis could, could, could come up with yeah in this in this diner you know because he probably had to just shoot coverage there's only the so much you can do they had to reshoot they had to do so many takes mm-hmm. of the lip syncing because just going right back to what you said previously there's she she does it different every yeah. single time, yeah. you know, and it will never line up. And they just did so many takes and they probably had to sift through. I don't know how many takes like 10, 15, 20 to takes right spot. to pick and pull things that will match up. Kind of that was choreographed pretty well, too. Like, yeah. it's an awesome, great song. Awesome scene. Great performance. I love I, like this is the maybe the true musical moment of the movie yeah yeah and it's still great but it just didn't they didn't do it right yeah like, it just yeah. does not translate to the rest of the great scenes yeah. in this movie uh unfortunately but fortunately it did pretty much revitalize aretha franklin's career like yeah. people would ask her uh, like about her time on this movie and her sales went up after this so i'm happy about that i think matt guitar murphy uh she makes it awkward too yeah yeah yeah, yeah but he should have he shouldn't have <laughs> joined a band with the Blues Brothers. He should have started a band with his wife. No shit. No who kidding. is apparently the best singer of all time. What are we doing yeah. here, guys? Yeah, and and, and they, she still didn't figure it out in Blues Brothers 2000. Oh. But uh, <laughs> nobody figured anything out in, in Blues, Blues Brothers, Brothers 2000. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I just think about uh, dry white toast, four fried chicken. Four fried chicken and, and a Coke. Coke. <laughs> you want wings or thighs? Four fried chickens <laughs> and a Coke. Jake and Elwood. Elwood. Like, and, and and that's 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 Matt's awesome uh, awesome acting. Elwood. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yeah, yeah. Put your put your hand on your chin. Yeah, this is an international thinking sign. <laughs> and then it's like he's always Jake. Like smiling, yeah. Because I think he's stoked to be in a movie, he's, he's <laughs> which is awesome. which I like. But it, yeah, you can tell he's like you know. He's, he can't really be directed. Yeah. <laughs> He's not meant for the screen. The second second worst might be Blue Lou. They didn't want to give him any lines, <laughs> really. <laughs> well, well, go on, get out of here, damn it. <laughs> didn't even take his apron off. Yeah. He's like, hey, I got I like how they brought their guitar and their saxophone yeah. to work. Like they're just always there. They're not working as musicians right now. No. So why why do they have them with them? Um just in case. It doesn't but, but man, <laughs> no, nope. I, you know, I, I hate story. I hate stories so much in life because my wife is unbelievable and still encourages me to play music. That, but you hear these stories of people getting married, mm-hmm. and then it's like you can't do that anymore. You know, like you got a kid, you yeah. got a family, like you can't play oh, music. Oh, I see. And so, like half of me is like, yeah, r- go on, Matt Guitar Murphy. Like screw her. But then I'm also like, no. She's telling you the right thing. Like this band <laughs> is not going anywhere and has never done anything, has never made money. They, still, they still owe, owe you money. money. <laughs> well, you know, it's she's like, right. Yeah. You can go, yeah. If you want to go practice with them and play this one show, <laughs> yes. cool. That sounds great. Maybe I'll bring the kids. Maybe I'll come and do like a, a little guest a guest spot. Do they you know, know that I sing? Yeah. yeah. They, they do, do now. now. They, yeah. Yeah. They, they sure yeah. as fuck do. <laughs> but you're absolutely right. And the other end of it then too is 
is maybe the argument isn't that it's like you're not gonna go play those two bit sleazy dives, you know, that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. It's maybe maybe the argument is um if you leave, no one's here to cook at the soul food restaurant <laughs> that we own. That we own together. <laughs> so we're going to go belly up. This is how we pay rent, yeah. Matt. <laughs> and so what so what? <laughs> like <laughs> maybe maybe it could have been um well hey maybe I can come and sing with you be a little bit better I love I th- I think one of my favorite one is the Ray Charles yeah song yeah. but why did they have to buy musical equipment they all have know. musical equipment yeah Matt walked out with his guitar and then when they get to the next show like they still all have their same equipment they always had yeah so I don't understand I get it it's very important to get Ray Charles in this movie totally and bling 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 this is one of the best ones. Dude, the face on that boy when he go, comes in to steal the guitar and, yeah. sh- and shoots at him, the face on that boy is like, holy shit. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and there's like a Makes my heart. there's like a, a danger. It says danger, no smoking above Ray <laughs> as he's playing. Danger. Like I was like, I've never seen danger, no smoking, but that's I like to believe point. that like anytime someone tries to smoke, he just fucking tries to blast them. Yeah. That's the danger is Dude, Ray. And what a sick shot of the lit up piano keys in his glasses yes oh my god i love that shot so much yeah that's ray charles right there that's like what i think of when i think of ray charles he he is he's so good in this movie i just think he's so good in this movie i i have this like weird vendetta against this song or like this weird like thing against this song um because it seemed like the middle school show choir where i grew up did this every single year and it just never that th- song that song what they always did it That's and it, badass it, it was but not as a middle school show <laughs> choir okay they aren't they aren't all professional dancers in the town of wherever Ray's music exchange in Joliet I think yeah. yeah they might not so but for some reason but I just remember hearing it Every day <laughs> while this is being practiced, and not as good at musicians either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, it just, and it's just, and you can just still see the blue vests. Uh, <laughs> just, something about it is just ingrained in me. Of just like I'm, I don't like this song. However, this is a saving grace when you finally when you get to see Ray Charles perform it. Yeah, uh, I I think. And then I love it's uh, as usual. I, I gotta take an <laughs> IOU. <laughs> He's so happy. Yeah. Then you get to Bob's Country Bunker. Well, before this, I like they they make a call in that uh, uh, phone booth to, to to I think to find a show or something like that. And I think uh, they're setting up the meeting with Maury. Sl- yeah, Maury Sline or Sline. something. Um, when uh, Ackroyd gets in there with him, he says, "Who are you gonna call, Jake?" I'm like. Who are you gonna call? Hey. Okay, I see where you're going I there. Like that. I Maybe like in it. the future you're gonna do some Ghostbusting. Right, Clever. Go. Maybe th- did they get that line from Ghost in Ghostbusters from this, Maybe. or did he plan it ahead of time? Did you plan that? Mm? Same universe. <laughs> Same universe. Mm. Yes. Same Chicago. You think? No. Yeah. No. Different Chicago. Different <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> Chicago, Florida. Okay. Chicago, Florida. <laughs> if there was a quote in this movie that I say more than other quotes. Because there's a lot of them. It's, we got both kinds, country and western. <laughs> country and western. <laughs> I fucking love Bob's Country Bunker. I want to go there. Mm-hmm. I want to throw beers at the at the chicken wire when a band plays a song I don't like. You know what Bob's Place needs is a good cooler. Mm. <laughs> they need Dalton. Oh! They need to bring in Dalton yeah. and get that place cleaned up. I need the best. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! Why can't these crossovers I need, happen? I want the. I want you. Wade Garrett's the best. Man, this is just one place that, that Wade Garrett just couldn't clean up. <laughs> yeah, it's it's his uh, white gray white buffalo. <laughs> I the the guy in the yellow hat is going through something. Oh, because when 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 they when stand they might by stand by your man like. He's, dude, he's going through a rough patch right now. <laughs> and he's going to get better. Everything's going to work out for him. But right now, he's in the deep cut of that yeah. broken up relationship. Yeah. Like, yeah. He's going through it, dude. He came from that breakup <laughs> to yeah. Bob's Country he Bunker. He came to forget about a lot of things. And then they play Stand By Your Man, which hilariously, I had never noticed until this moment in time, our rewatch, 
He goes, oh, uh, yeah, we got it. We're going to play a song. Uh, it's a favorite of the horn section. <laughs> yeah. and, they, and they don't actually play horns during the They song. all put their stuff down. <laughs> Stand by your <laughs> man. I love that. They don't play the damn song. <laughs> favorite of the horn section. Ooh, <laughs> here's a prop. <laughs> okay. I want the whip. Okay. Mm. During Rawhide. I want, okay. I, want, I've always wanted a whip. You want an orange whip? No, I don't want an orange whip. Oh, orange whips? A whip. Four oh. orange whips? I want four. four. I want the whip as a prop. I've always wanted nice. to have a whip. He makes me want to do it. I want to hit like a cigarette out of somebody's mouth. I want to learn how to do it. Mm. Yes. You want mm. a whip. Uh, I mean, there's the obvious. Sometimes that's all it takes. I need the Bluesmobile. Yeah. I need it. With the A track player, with I, Sam and Dave. <laughs> You're going to take the. I you're just, just you're gonna take the, the A track player out of my prop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have the whole thing. Uh, you're such a. Well, then I will take I will take the uh, d- maybe. It, do you take the uh, the soiled prophylactic? Oh yeah, I think <laughs> oh so. <my> just <laughs> <God>. <laughs> I mean, I'm into it. Can't leave that evidence around. You gotta take it with you. No, no, uh, no. I want the I want the uh, I want the Empty Dom Perignon bottle cool. that was there. Nice. Yep, that's cool. what I want. Uh, so I, you know, I do the math. You know, I like to do stuff like that. So they, we've all been. If you've been in a band, you've been there before, where you drank more. I was going to ask a you about bar this. tab than what you've been paid. Like you, yeah. you've you've been there, right? Sure. So after the band's done playing, you know, Bob says you drink. Owe me a lot of money for beer. God damn it! They drank three hundred dollars worth of beer. In 1980, the average price of a bottle of beer was a dollar fifty. Good God, that means ten be- ten members drank about two hundred beers <laughs> or twenty beers apiece. Well, like the <laughs> first ones we came in, the ga- lady didn't charge us, so we thought it was complimentary for the band. Or come something. on, I mean, at least like three or four of them should. Be. If they had each had two or three apiece, we're probably going to comp that. It was a great night, right? You can't have 200 beers. <laughs> That's hilarious. I think you're going to get away with it. <laughs> my, my band does drink a lot of beer. We've never drank 200. No. Well, <laughs> I, I was going to ask you about this, too, in the, in the fact of, you know, maybe there should have been some better negotiations going on. Maybe they should have uh, discussed the rider that well, they had with the country yeah, boys, well, the good old boys. Good old boys, had already, like, it was already in place. They didn't know. Yeah. They were just sliding into that gig. Well, that's what I'm saying, but they... <laughs> they could, you go in and it's like we just wanted to make sure uh, you got our rider and everything right and just kind of oh, just yeah. do what Jake does 12 boiler makers and, and yeah. three shots each of Jack Daniels yep and uh, and then the beers and like the discussion of that the cost and all that good stuff obviously Jake is probably just happy to have a gig to kind of satisfy yeah, the, the band boys. of like yeah. the boys of playing a gig but at the same time there's got to be some negotiation going on here come on I feel like see He's the ideas guy. Yeah. He's the guy that gets him out of the jam. You know, Elwood's the just kind of the driver, is what I'm saying. Well, he gets him into the jams, and then he's got to get him out of the jams. Yeah. yeah. By the way, and play the jams. Um. Ooh. Ooh. If if it's ooh, the here's uh, a problem. <laughs> ooh. <laughs> if if the good old boys are playing tonight, and Everything is now closing up. <laughs> Where the hell were they? Yeah, exactly. Well, first of all, it said tonight I said tonight only. I bet the Nazis got in their fucking way. <laughs> which, you know, could be a good thing that the Nazis did. But then, no, no, I'm with you. We're right? assuming that it's one o'clock, two in the morning. They're still rolling up like we got to get inside and play. There's no yeah. cars in the parking lot it's, anymore. It's not that it's not like, oh, the set's all done and it's only like, you know, 945. You don't you don't leave after the band is done. You leave at closing. The entire restaurant's cleared out. And that's that one girl is is picking up singular pieces of glass <laughs> into a bag. That was all. That's also a very funny shot to me. That like I think it's glanced over is like all this broken glass and everything, and she's just like picking up little one at a time <laughs> into the bag. No, you nailed it. Like there, that doesn't make any sense. No. I mean, it's a great. I love what happens here. Yeah, it's, it's hilarious. It's my favorite line of the movie is uh, 
You're gonna look pretty fucking funny trying to drink, <laughs> trying to eat corn on the cob, but no fucking teeth. Fucking teeth. What's that? What's that actor's uh, name? I got uh, him. I got him. Oh, I can't think of it. No, oh. it's dude. It's and it, when you hear it, you're like, oh yeah, that's his name. Charles Napier. Charles Napier. He is perfect as the driver of the Winnebago. No fucking uh, teeth. I love that. Lead singer and driver of the Winnebago. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care about <laughs> You're the good old boys. <laughs> You're the good old boys. Well, I sure would appreciate it. And, uh, I love it. I love how Bob Southern just. Southern hospitality. Bob yes. just doesn't. Apparently not. Uh, <laughs> because Bob doesn't negotiate at all. He's just. He well, we thought it was uh, complimentary. Uh, Southern for passive the band. aggressiveness. Oh, there I you mean. go. There you <laughs> go. I like that. He, goes, uh, no. he, just, he just said, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, Okay, then. <laughs> All right, so final scene. After advertising for the show, the ballroom is packed. Jake and Elwood perform two songs, then sneak off stage as the tax deadline is rapidly approaching. After collecting money and escaping, Jake's ex-girlfriend, Jake and Elwood, race back towards Chicago with dozens of state and local police, the Nazis, and the good old boys in pursuit. Finding the office of the Cook County Assessor, the brothers pay the tax bill. Just as their receipt is stamped, they are arrested by the mob of law officers in prison. The band plays jailhouse rock for the inmates. All right. This is the good old days. Not the good old boys. This is the good old days. Going around and stapling up uh, flyers for your show. Going around telling people about your show. Word of mouth. Loudspeakers loud on your car. Loudspeakers. Right. This, is, this, is, this is why I... I, I I love you guys, but doing the Instagram, I, it, it hurts. It hurts. I wish I could just go to your house and be like, listen to my fucking podcast. Look at the look at the reel that Mike just made. Drive down your street like a goddamn ice cream man. I would and rather just, do that. Just play that thing. Like, just, yeah, just say, hey. You on the bicycle. Yeah. You two girls. I think. I think <laughs> Ladies that there, night. At, uh, I think that there is a cap to a human being of how many hashtags they can do in their lives. Yeah. And I'm reaching that point. Shit. I just want to make a flyer and bring it to you and tell you to do my thing. So with that Hashtag being said. If, exhausted. Yeah. If anyone, <laughs> if anyone wants to take over our social media, with that being said, you'd, Sean's at his wit's head. There We're uh, taking interns. <laughs> Free parking. <laughs> free parking at free my parking. garage it's ladies night dude i also love how the, the, the good old boys see tonight only it's on the bathroom wall like how do we know what yeah. tonight is there's no <laughs> date it's just tonight only like for a good time be here at 4 a.m yeah. <laughs> 3 345 or whatever that at least has a date and a time yeah. on it exactly uh, this for, just for says, a good buick call <laughs> whatever <laughs> buick that's like the shitty joke like free, free beer tomorrow yeah <laughs> got him got him yeah, they'll come back in. tomorrow and he'll still say tomorrow <laughs> oh, man. it's dude's night it's a little redundant yeah. <laughs> 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 Oh. Dudes will always be here, chicks. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't yeah. know. Uh, we haven't talked about um, John Candy. Uh. I mean, like, I've seen so many movies recently where he's just this is just this no reason for him to be in the movie. Yeah, but he is, and it's awesome. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love him in this movie. The Orange Whips line is so classic. It was improv. Yeah, that's yeah, right. He just ad libbed it, and it, <laughs> it I. I don't know what, like what an orange whip is. I've never even had Would one. Would you like to know? Yes. An orange whip is a sweet cocktail made with rum, vodka, cream, and orange juice, typically blended to a froth like a milkshake poured over ice in a Collins glass. I think I might Sounds have Sounds awesome. Yeah, it's kind of like an orange Julius almost, yeah. Ooh. Uh, but boozy. Man, we should have made orange whips for this episode. We should have. Orange whip. Dang. Orange whip. Dang. Orange whip. Three orange whips. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, but you said he improved it. Apparently, it was the name of the catering company. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> they, it was just it was just like a <laughs> orange whip. It was called Orange Whip, and I guess like he was talking to John Candy one day, and he's like, "Dude, you should say my name. Say say my name in the movie oh, somehow." Yeah. <laughs> and so he's like, "Orange Whip." <laughs> Orange Whip. Yeah, he, he just, doesn't really he like did it. have any significant lines besides that one, and and you know it's just his presence, man. <laughs> not yet, not yet. It's, it's well, not, not yet. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But even when, even when they they wave him at, at him on stage, yeah. he goes, <laughs> he's so fucking on. It's I, like that that like, and if if they did, I don't know if they did, and at, at the end of this movie, but that would that would be his like title card for like and starring John. Yeah, that, hundred like, percent. That's exactly what it would be. Yeah, uh, but also. John Belushi and John Candy, two great Johns. All they were missing was John Goodman, but he got there eventually, right, guys? Uh, but no, love they, John Goodman. No, I hate that movie. He didn't. <laughs> he didn't do anything to deserve that movie. <laughs> <laughs> to have that movie thrust upon him. Yeah. 
the, uh, he, he, under contract on Universal. Yeah, <laughs> but those two, you think about it, and those those are like guys who pr- are probably fit for the same role. Yeah, completely. I yeah. mean, right? I mean, and for them to be in a movie together, I mean, you just think of casting and stuff, and you're gonna get pigeonholed, and you're the you're you're the kind of bigger funny guy who's a little outlandish and. Um, and they had never been in movies together. You, which is also shocking. Yeah. Chicago, like, right. ca- like comedy guys, you know, bigger guys. Um, but this is like some of the only interaction they ever had, and also a part of that club. Unfortunately, it just left us too soon. Gone too early, man. It just yeah. sucks, man. And what what follows is, uh, I mean, we got many of the moocher. Yes, we got to talk about Cab Calloway. It is. A great scene, and I like I like how it's interspersed with them trying to get there. Yes, it's and great talking down Carrie Fisher. Yeah, um, that's that's later. After, yeah. that, well, uh, it's it's also a part that I was talking about uh, earlier um, when they incorporate the music and they're sneaking. Yes, yes. And then the fantastical nature of it, uh, where when he goes hit it, yeah, and then now the stage is. They're all in suits and they've got front right front things in front of them and it's like this grand stage and then when the song ends it's right back to them just going yes yeah in their normal clothes on stage yeah completely normal again this Jeez. is just shot like a beautiful <laughs> beautiful concert film like uh, uh the Talking Heads want to stop yeah. making sense it's shot so well and with such love for the songs and with such love for just performance in general uh is my favorite scene in the movie I mean it's the just Cli- the whole it's the performance, climax, pretty much. Yeah. yeah, it's it's just it just reminds me of how much I love doing that yes. and how much I miss it, and I want to be on stage performing. But uh, yeah, I I adore this scene. I even like there's like even just certain shots of like uh, Cab Calloway yeah. behind him, and the lights are down on him, and it's the crowd going nuts, and he's just like like this. I'm like, yes, oh, you're absolutely so epic. right. He he immediately awesome. yeah. has the crowd in the palm of his hand, you know, and that's that's the that's such a cool part of it. Um, there's the, the my favorite song is definitely "Sweet Home Chicago," hundred um, percent, and like watching Elwood go down that that catwalk. The proper just, use of boom, the catwalk, boom, by yes. the way, boom, boom. <laughs> like the steps that he is doing is just phenomenal. Then like knee to knee. Yes. It's like <laughs> it's so great. And like I love that song. And that is a song that will like almost instantaneously like make me happy. Yes. Because even though you know, even being from Iowa or, you know, just the Midwest in general, I think you feel something for that song. Yeah. Um, you, you just hear Sweet Home Chicago, but it just makes you think Sweet Home wherever the hell Better I am. Better than Sweet Home Alabama. Yes. Yeah, right. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> just gonna throw that out there. Yeah. I agree. Big Kid Rock fan, huh? Also Kid uh, Rock, way to make the song even worse. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. With Werewolves of London. Yeah, yeah thanks for ruining Warren Zeffin. <laughs> 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 Thanks for ruining. Ro- you were so <laughs> confident <laughs> with it. You were, you were like Warren Zeffin. I know. I know I music. Know. I can't remember. <laughs> it's on my Halloween playlist uh, over here. Dang it, <laughs> man! But I'll tell you what, though. This, if if norm- if I went to a concert normally, and the the band left two and a half songs, <laughs> yeah, in, I was I know, say. shit, dude. <laughs> You you're get you're refunding my money. Rhythm and blues review. Yeah, <laughs> you're 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 getting my money back if if the band then plays instrumentals for the next hour. Yeah, it's uh exactly <laughs> uh rhythm and blues review. So then after that, like the 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 song the band keeps playing and it fades out and then all of a sudden you just hear and they come yeah. out and review something for you like a review <laughs> yeah, movie or like, or like some rhythm some blues and blues songs. rhythm and blues review. My review is that I got. Fucking gypped out of my money. Yeah, I was really. Here's a review. This. Uh, here's a Yelp review for you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm never coming back here again. <laughs> <laughs> Although, man, I'll tell you what, though, I would have given anything to have seen that concert, and I probably 100%. would have s- settled for two and a half songs. I with how too. awesome that was. Yeah, yeah, we'd like to, we'd like to, we'd like to thank especially all the uh, Illinois police <laughs> force <laughs> yeah, yeah. decided to join us tonight. <laughs> it's like, they're just throughout the entire thing. Somebody Standing there with giant rifles. Somebody just needs to like like redo it to some degree and do it like the full bore way, like bringing in police at like 
like <laughs> like actors as police officers or something like throughout the whole thing and somehow I think we've crossed the threshold where we just can't do that you anymore. can't do that anymore even that i'm not though, saying they have to have guns i'm yeah. just saying they could look like one even that though <laughs> it, it's the the, so the care of the scene even the cops are staged beautifully they're backlit by the like the pillars yep, in the background yep. it's just so good yeah well uh so now we get obviously the ridiculous end of this movie like i forgot how ridiculous this whole this this is a very long movie and like we're still like 20 minutes from the end at this point because of how much of a car chase that this thing just starts off slow and normal and then just gets completely out of control with dropping a nazi car off of <laughs> that pinto or whatever yeah like it is it's did did you recognize the police dis- dispatcher uh, who's like he's just has two scenes where he's like on the microphone going ah calling all cars and getting all the cars calling all cars calling call, 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 all cars calling all cars <laughs> his, name, his name is uh, Ralph Foodie. That is um, the dude from Home Alone who's on the videos. Angels with Filthy, filthy oh, Souls. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're He's right. the gangster. No kidding. Yeah, that is him, man. Yeah, that's yeah. rad. Ralph Foodie. He also uh, coined the hashtag Foodie. Foodie, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's him. F O D F O O D Y is how he spells it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever. whatever. Uh, the, speaking of the Pinto, uh, they actually had to get like approval from the faa to drop they d- took a helicopter and dropped this car yeah. uh they had to they had to prove and test it one time that to prove that they could like drop it and hit an x and so like okay cool and so they just went up again and started filming because they want it's it's it works so good and it looks so good because you get the chicago <laughs> skyline like you see the sears tower is right there and a car's fucking <laughs> falling yeah it's a real, <laughs> it's a so real ridiculous. car dropped from a real height above the Sear, sears tower <laughs> <laughs> and they have to prove to that it's FAA not airworthy. That it's not airworthy. <laughs> yeah. That it will not deviate. That it will not fly to some degree. <laughs> airworthy. <laughs> airworthy. It turns out. It turns out know, it's not. I don't know what that did for uh, Pinto sales uh, in 1980 <laughs> and 81, but uh, they really dropped. They, oh, I, I hate you. I'm gonna give you this. No, I'm going no, to give I it to you. Do not accept. I, I you have, you have to I take can't it. accept that. You have to take it. Man. I hate you Damn because it. it was well timed. <laughs> That's the only reason you get it, not because it was a good joke. I uh, <laughs> am a reluctant. I need you while you were down, and I got the championship. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this thing, this thing's just ridiculous. No. Like it gets crazier and crazier as it goes on. The movie just revels in being this. Yes. You know, they got this budget and John Lannis is like, I'm using this motherfucker. We're getting all these cars and you can tell it's so comedically uh put together like when they go across the embankment, yes. there's just a pile of cars and and <laughs> under the Chicago bridge there's just a pile of cars and he's reveling in it. You know, it's like car after car after car and he's still staying on it. I love it. <laughs> you I love the glee that that exudes off of this movie of yeah. just filmmaking and music in general. My two favorite things. Yeah. Hi. I still <laughs> I don't know why you're changing glasses. What are you talking about? <sighs> did you think for the re- did you think for a very long time in your life that Anytime, like a SWAT team was involved in something, that they went. Yes, because uh, I apparently that's not what they do, but that's what I thought for my entire life. I I think back now through this movie, and I think I literally think that <laughs> I think it's hilarious. <laughs> that, I think it's hilarious too because they show the one guy who's rappelling down. You just hear up. <laughs> and then it's all of it like I always thought though that is such a cartoon thing and again I'll just say it again you think back to all the outlandish things that happen in this rocket launchers and blowing up a building and people walking away and you just you can pull these things right out of Tom and Jerry or Wiley and Wiley Coyote and the Roadrunner and all this stuff the chase scenes, the obnoxiousness of these chase scenes. It's so funny, man. It's and it's because they basically just ripped off cartoons with yeah. and and just did it right in front of you and it's very very funny. Yeah. The out, the insane car pileups um that happen in the, in this to to finish it up and finally getting up Finally getting up to the tax assessors. Cook County Assessors. Cook, Steven Cook County Spielberg. Assessors. How is that Steven Spielberg? <laughs> He'll be back in five minutes. Another cartoon reference. Yes. Uh, yeah. They will never let it go. It's great, man. It, yeah, there's Steven, uh, Steven Spielberg right there. Well, there was another reason they didn't want to uh, 
like or they were mad that they gave this movie so much money because his movie before this, which had John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd in it, I believe. 1941? 1941 was a huge flop. Yeah. And it's like considered to be... They're like, I you guess, sure? <laughs> I guess if you're not considering Hook, which is a blasphemy, uh, it's just like his worst yeah. um, film, I guess. Right. But oh. um, Yeah, so... Having him in this is kind of weird, but I love seeing him. You got to love seeing him. Oh, that yeah. might be my favorite shot of the movie is all of those guns perfectly placed yes, over everyone's it shoulders. Looks so good. Yes. That is that makes me claustrophobic. It also speaking of cartoons, it looks like a just like one of those single frame uh cartoon panels you get in a newspaper. Yeah. You know, it looks like and there was like there'd be like a cle- a clever quip and mm. that's it. Yeah. Um I I think that Jailhouse Rock is the best way to end this movie. Yep. Yeah. Ever. But my but my question is, what did the band do? Why are they in jail? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't like that. They. Uh, yeah. But what what did they do? Well, yeah. Now Aretha's is done. Yeah. Like she's either gonna have to hire a bunch bunch of people or. Yep. She's carrying that workload. Yep. You, you gotta you gotta think. I mean, uh, all Shank. those. <laughs> you, <laughs> Yeah. I that's where he was going. <laughs> Thank <with that>. you, <laughs> but <laughs> really <not. laughs> you gotta think, man. Um, and Matt Matt Murphy did not about what you're doing to me. Yes. Yeah, you got to think um, that if the Blues Brothers had I guess, just worried about themselves and yeah. not gone to that church, they would have been just fine. If they would have just you stop, you think think about freedom, but they don't have about freedom. What trying to do to me? What they're trying to do? <laughs> they're now they're in prison. You know, Aretha is basically a a, st- <laughs> a fortune teller at this point. <laughs> She's um, the oracle. She's in th- <laughs> 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 now you've earned it. Damn. Uh, okay. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I just I love it. Jailhouse Rock. It looks great. What the hell did the band do? Why are they there? Why is Joe Walsh there? Why is, why is Joe, Joe Walsh, Walsh in, in prison with him? And Joe, why is not? Why is Joe Walsh? He's just going to join up with the Blues Brothers now because he's definitely going to be like sick. It, you know that would be great. And uh, instead of the Eagles, and that'll be fine. Cool. Yeah. Nobody cares about the Eagles anyway. Nope. So we've dissected this movie. We've man. dissected this movie with a modern eye. We've stripped away the nostalgia. It is time to give it a modern day rating to see where it ranks. I'm going to start with Sean on this one. Sean, where are you going to be at on this one, dude? I just love movies like this where it seems like this. it's such a treat and you are glad that it just even exists. Um, and it seems like such a hard movie to make being in the streets of Chicago, uh, with a, what, a 200, 130 cars, whatever, uh, call just piling up call, 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 call. <laughs> on top of being uh, a good, a great action movie with all of the car chases. It's a great comedy. It's a great musical. It's a great movie about music. It, d- it made people discover this kind of music for the second time. Um, I'm one of them. Yeah, I I uh, I kind of adore this movie, man. I'm gonna give it. Uh, I'm pretty high. I'm not <laughs> nine point two. Nine point two for the show. <laughs> Age, what do you got, man? You said you're a nine point two. Yeah. Wow. Um, uh, wow. Wow. Uh, I I have this. I I go back and forth on this movie because as much as I I love it and I love, I feel like this movie gave me it was like a big part of a music like music appreciation for me you know and i love the blues it's probably one of my all-time favorite genres of music to to listen to and revisit constantly and um but and and i love the jokes i love i love the the duo of Aykroyd and and belushi and uh all the cameos and even you know having a little bit of john candy in there um but i i have to say i think it's a long movie i do think i think that that's it's part of the joke, but at the same time, I think there is a point where the joke w- was worn out for me. The car chases, uh, it's it's a lo- it's just a long movie. It's two hours, 12 minutes, something like that. So I think it's more than that. Is it really? It's like two, three, seven. I mean, it's a it's a long one. And uh, I think uh, I, I, I have a, such a great appreciation for what the movie is, but I don't necessarily need or want to constantly watch it again. So... To be completely honest, I think for this movie, I am a 7.3. 7.3 for the age. I, I This movie is so important to me for what it truthfully randomly put into my life. Not just the joy of watching it and learning about great music and stuff, but the, the that moment I told you about in the beginning. like 
the, those freak small occurrences in life that that change your life. Um, so that that is a big deal. But I mean, again, I have to kind of strip that away. Uh, it's a, it's an awesome movie. It's not perfect. It's not perfect, but it's freaking awesome. Um, I'm an eight point four five. Executive producer Bud Larson says, I've watched this so many times throughout the years. I have the unrated version on Vudu. The unrated version is two hours and 27 minutes long. It might have been what you watched. Yeah, yeah. Holy shit, was that was the movie ever going to start? Could they have filmed <laughs> Jake walking through the prison anymore? The opening scenes took forever, like eight plus minutes. No wonder TBS cut so much out of the movie. So maybe that was a thing. Maybe mm. those all were cut out. Um, let's see. So I thought the church scene with James Brown also took forever, like seven plus minutes. It did. Driving through the mall uh, has got to be one of the funniest car chases of all time. I love Carrie Fisher's character from using a rocket launcher at Elwood's apartment to blowing up the building to using a flamethrower on a phone booth to an M16 in the tunnel at the end of the movie. Where does she get this stuff? Is she an ATF agent? I never understood how it's 106 miles to Chicago. They left during their show. They're being chased by police since they left their show at night and they don't get to Chicago till morning. <laughs> that's when that's when they get to the Cook County Assessor. There's a sign on the door it says back in five minutes like the guy was having a sandwich on morning break question <laughs> how slow was the police chase? they were going 115 through downtown like were they driving 20 miles per hour on the highway so i did a little research and the palace hotel ballroom is 11 miles from cook county assessor's office <laughs> where the fuck did these guys go i know it's a movie but still so many questions that don't make sense like mike said in the top five soundtrack episode this is a musical i too hate musicals but the music in this movie is amazing punchable face bill billy bob uh, uh, so that'd be uh, Bob, 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 yeah, yeah, Bob, Bunker. Yeah. Bob, funny part when the leader of the good old boys crashes through the building at the end up in a pond. He looks at Billy Bob and says, don't you say a fucking word. <laughs> Prop the trooper's hat when they all went into the truck where John Candy, favorite actor <laughs> yes. of all time, character says, this is car 55. We're in a truck. <laughs> <laughs> we're in the back of a truck. <laughs> I would watch this again if I could start from like the 45 minute mark. That being said, modern day rating from the 45 minute mark on 9.5. Wow. If I have to watch the whole thing, 6.2. So I'm going to I'm going to average that. I'm going to call an executive decision and say that that is a 7.85, which takes us to an 8. Point two All right. Total yeah. as a modern day rating. I got to take these glasses off. <laughs> That uh, that ties at number 13 with Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Wow. wow. Slightly better than Stand By Me, slightly worse than T2 Judgment Day is what we feel about this movie. Well, it's worse than T2, but better than what? Than Stand By Me. Then st uh, okay. okay. All right. I mean, yeah. this this is like a... This is gospel, so... This is like, okay. a, uh, like a Rocky Horror picture to me. This is like a party movie. Yes. Mm -hmm. like yeah. if you Watch had, this with a group of people. That would be so much fun. Yeah. I see. I guess we'll just do it. You Let's got just to. do that. Right. Well, well, we hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks for being here. A bunch of great movies coming up. Kindergarten Cop we is next. It. We've been talking about it for a while. Sorry, we got our schedule screwed up. And then we're jumping into Christmas time. Uh, we are picking our Christmas movie that we are doing, which is going to be Just Friends. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, and we picked it. We did. Yeah, we did. <laughs> well, you didn't say nothing. <laughs> and then we have a Patreon <laughs> vote going on right now for our other Christmas movie. If you're new to the podcast, go back this time last year. We had a mini bite about Goosebumps. I thought that was a pretty one. Uh, that was when, uh, hi. I'm R.L. Stein. <laughs> I'm R.L. Stein. Yeah, that's a funny couple of good jokes coming from that mini bite. <laughs> Goosebumps. Hi, I'm R.L. Stein. <laughs> uh, don't forget, we have a voicemail. Call us at 319-804-9596. Here's today's caller. All right, Donnie. <laughs> so, guys, I've been listening for a little bit since you guys were actually on the, the Burt Kreischer show. and Actually, since you guys were on that show, I haven't listened to one of Burt's shows. I've been just tearing through all your episodes, loving everything yeah, about all right. it. Uh, obviously, the nostalgia. I've heard people talk about the whole warm blanket thing. For sure, for sure, I feel that as well. Pretty awesome. I know you guys are uh, into breakfast, but just a gentle reminder, the longer you animals bark, the colder your lunch gets. <laughs> I was hoping you guys could take a look at 8-Bit Christmas. Oh. It's a newer movie, and I know yeah. that you guys don't do too many of those, uh, but heavy with nostalgia. It's uh, trying to imagine a Christmas story with the Red Rider BB gun replaced with the NES Nintendo system, mm. uh, and obviously set in the 80s. I think you guys would like it, and I'd sure love to hear what you guys have to think about it. Uh, say about it, I should say. Anyway, thank you, and uh, thank you guys for working so hard for so little and for giving us uh, a lot of enjoyment. You guys have a great day. 
Hey, thanks, man. Did you guys watch that last year? No, but I remember you talking about it, and I I can't wait to watch did it. Did you? I did. We, uh, you know, maybe maybe that's a bonus episode coming up yeah, sometime. Maybe we'll do it on Patreon or something like that. Because that, if you guys, he's, he's right. If you haven't watched it, it's it's right up our alley yeah, of everything yeah. we do here. And if you like this, you're gonna love that. I'm movie. excited to check it out. Absolutely. Thanks for calling, buddy. And also shout out to our boy Dave from California. I accidentally deleted his voicemail. He had a nice long one, but Dave's got some crazy stuff going on at home. Um, you know, times are a little tough, but at the same time. He talked about getting really great enjoy- enjoyment from the show and being appreciative of it. And he said he's got uh, two different buddies that are on other parts of the country that they like basically all listen to. You, like, hey, it's Wednesday. We listen to the episode and then oh. we'll talk about it oh, together. Cool. So, oh, yeah, wow. it said one of his buddies sent him a Cedar Ridge bottle too. So, like, Dave, pulling for you. Love you, man. Uh, you bet. Sorry I deleted your voicemail. Love you, bud. Thanks. Indeed. Thanks for all the <laughs> kind words. Thanks, yeah, Brent. and that's uh, about it for us, AJ. Let's get out of here, man. Guys, we so appreciate you listening to the show. Make sure you're leaving us a five-star review. If you love it so much and you're listening this long, go ahead and leave us a five-star review. Write us a review, too. We love reading them. Spotify, Apple. Uh, but make sure you find us on social media at Confused Breakfast anywhere. Uh, on social meds, the social medias, get us at at Confused Breakfast. Go to that same damn website and buy some <laughs> merch. <laughs> get, get some shirts. <laughs> get a hat. Uh, <laughs> go to our website and uh, look at our reviews. And, uh, you know, you can compare them there. Uh, also, uh, hit up uh, Not Your Father's Beer Shirts, um, his Instagram, if you want some of these uh, Confused Breakfast shirts for the, the Three Ninjas. Uh, worked hard on them share these episodes to anybody willing to listen to check us out on patreon.com slash confused breakfast join the patreon that is where all the cool kids are this show is produced by las media group in cedar rapids iowa craig thanks for manning the controls today Woo! you can learn more about those guys at lasmediagroup.com that's it for us we're the hell out of here